Hey everyone, it's me again, Spectralite. And this is Frost Vitale's 2022 Benefiting Malala Fund. That was a fantastic Resident Evil 2 remake run by Cyanide Sugar. Can we get another round of applause for her in chat? Thank you so much for showcasing an awesome game for a great cause. I'll be your host for our upcoming Fatal Frame 3 run tonight, showcased by Miss Scarlet Tanager and joined by Gallus Rini with commentary. Fatal Frame is a fantastic survival horror series and one of my personal favorites, so I can't wait to watch Miss Scarlet Tanager beat this game in a flash. And we have a $10 donation from Anonymous with no comment. Thank you for your generosity. And a $5 donation from Emmy. Thank you for your generosity. And without further ado, let's take it away with Fatal Frame 3. Hello. So I am Miss Scarlet Tanager, and I heard the chat liked bunnies. So this is Tally. You may see her in the background. She is very cute. I'm gonna let her down now because she doesn't like being picked up. But can I get what our uh, costume picks are? Sure thing. Doing one last refresh. And let's see, we have the ribbon for the cat. Okay. And we have the fox ears for Kay. Miku will be equipped with the cat ears. And Ray is actually a tie between the red yukata and suit. I mean, if it's a tie, I'm always gonna pick suit because it's my favorite. <laughs> Let's go with suit then. Okay, and just for the other ones, just to make it even Stevens, we will give Ray cat ears as well. And did that actually save? It did, and we are playing on Nightmare, if I recall. Right? Yes, we are. We reached okay. that that challenge, and you will be playing on New Game Plus on Nightmare Mode. Alrighty, so extra it's spooky. Extra spooky. Actually, it's the only mode in New Game Plus that actually does get dangerous. <laughs> um, so, oh right, and I, I almost completely forgot. I am. Um, joined by on commentary. Want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Gallus Rini. I don't run Frame for Tales, but I'm here to provide emotional support and also to learn about the run with chat as well, learning about this run. <laughs> so I'll be asking questions and helping out. <laughs> yes. All right, so it, time is going to start as soon as I hit on the nightmare. Um, in three, two, one. Click. All right, so Fatal Frame is, of course, a very spooky, spooky game where you uh, get ghost to model for your camera. Now, the difference between New Game Plus and New Game, obviously we had that big screen that you just saw and we were able to pick costumes. Um, but the difference is in a normal, you know, beginning, New game Fatal Frame, you have a weak camera and you have to level up the camera using spirit points that you get. Now, in New Game Plus, instead of having a normal camera, you have a bazooka camera. Your camera is fully upgraded and has everything unlocked. And because of that, if we were actually playing this on easy, if that incentive had not gotten met, I would have been able to one shot everything in the game up to and including the final boss. <laughs> but because we are on Nightmare, that is no longer an option. So it does make some parts of the run a touch more dangerous. I want to ask, what are the difference between Nightmare mode compared to like normal or easy for this game, the difficulty? So most of the difference comes in how much damage the enemies do and how aggressive they are. So in a normal, in a normal run, you might get hit. You might be able to take a couple hits before you need to heal. In Nightmare, you need to heal after every hit, pretty much. Now, what I'm doing right now is called stair skating, and you may know that term from a lot of other games because it's actually a fairly common type of glitch. It is also present in Fatal Frame 1 and 2. I can't remember if it's in the ones after this, but I know it is in 1 and 2. 
but it's different in this game. In Fatal Frame 1 and 2, you uh, do the stair glitch by spamming the run button while going up or down stairs. In Fatal Frame 3, you have to like flick your control to the left or to the right, to the side, in a, it's hard to explain, but in a weird sort of way in order to trigger the glitch while also spamming the run button which can sometimes make it a little bit difficult to pull off. And if you don't do it correctly or you do it too soon after starting on getting on stairs, you actually end up going really slow and your character almost stops in place running. So you have to be careful when you trigger it and how you trigger it. Also, yes, there are bunnies behind me. Okay, good, it actually did skip correctly there. Sometimes when you are spamming to try and skip cutscenes in this game, it'll some for some reason pull up the menu there's not really an explanation why it'll just pull up the menu in the middle of a cutscene. Thankfully it didn't happen there because it's slightly annoying. An interesting little quirk about New Game Plus is that you can feasibly go through the entire game without opening the menu a single time. A little bit harder on Nightmare because I do tend to get hit in a couple specific parts, which gets a little scary. So I'm just going to be running to the um, first little checkpoint here. So we got time for about um, one or two donations. Sure thing. We have a $375 donation from Mecha Momo saying, hey, let's save K. And indeed <laughs> we are. We actually uh, reached that incentive. So we will be oh. saving K this run. Excellent. Jeez. So awesome. funny, funny story about um, saving K in this game. It's actually not a category um, on speedrun.com. Fatal Frame 3 doesn't have a good ending category because the game is so long and what you do to save K only takes about five to 10 minutes depending on how fast you go. But I'm glad because if we did not save K, he would be getting Thanos at one point. And I mean that quite literally. Whoa, that's not the way Thanos' turn. So this is Yoshi. Her name's Yoshino, but I call her Yoshi because I find that funnier. Now, the story of this game is, you are playing as Rei. Rei is a photographer. Prior to the events of the game, she got into a car wreck that uh, took out her poor fiance. Now, because of that, she has started to have dreams about a spooky, spooky manner which happens to be the spooky, spooky manor that I'm in right now. And in this spooky, spooky manor are some spooky, spooky ghosts. We don't like the spooky, spooky ghosts. And now you get to see, before I finish that explanation, I'm just gonna very quickly, this is the first fight and done. <laughs> that is the power of New Game Plus. I am on Nightmare and with a fully upgraded camera, I can one shot the first boss. I think that's the only boss that you can one-shot on Nightmare. If I was playing on normal new game, I would not have been able to do that. <laughs> Which is sort of an upside to playing new game plus, at least for your first few runs, so you can sort of learn. But anyway, the game is split up between nighttime and daytime sections. Now, you don't usually do much during the nighttime sections, but the daytime section is pretty much go find the thing in the house in order to trigger nighttime. And when you trigger nighttime, you go to bed. When you go to bed, you travel to the manor of sleep in your dreams, and that is where all of the spoopy things happen. And if anybody knows Fatal Frame at all, you should be able to recognize this character coming up here, especially because she is wearing the same outfit she wears in Fatal Frame 1. Everyone say hello to Miku. She has very pretty cat ears. Oh, I almost went there. No, I am going the right way. One thing that can be a little bit difficult with uh, this game in particular is trying to remember exactly what you would need to do to trigger the nighttime sections. <laughs> there have been times in the past where I have gotten tripped up. Kay. And here is the lovely camera obscura. There isn't any ghosts in that you fight in the house. There will be ghosts in the house. Not yet, but there will be ghosts in the house. You just don't fight them. They just show up to be spoopy. All right, so I've got a little bit, you got probably time for like one donation right now, because I'm just running around the house. 
Sure thing. We have a $50 donation from Gemniet and saying, what's the only thing that can make Horror Block better? Cat girls. I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much for your contribution to Malala Fund. So interesting story. One of the donation incentives was whether or not to give Rudy, the cat, a bell or a ribbon. And you can actually play with the cat. Um, I can never remember how to... I know how to trigger it, it just doesn't always trigger entirely because if the cat's asleep, Ray will just walk up to her and hold out her fil- or hold out her hand and be like, play with me, and the cat will just sit there. <laughs> but if the cat is awake, the cat will like rub against your hand and you can give the cat pets. That's really cute. <laughs> yeah. It's extremely adorable. The thing is, it's partially RNG where the cat is in the house, and it depends on where the cat is in the house whether or not it actually like lets you pet the cat. <laughs> So I can't, I can't guarantee cat pets. I can, I can make an attempt, but I can't guarantee cat pets. <laughs> All right, so we are in nighttime mode. Now the camera obscure during the daytime or the house sections of the game is your save point. Now I might do a couple safety saves later on. We don't have to do one yet because of being on New Game Plus. I am rather safe, at least for the first half or so of the game. Now you see? Ray went to sleep, and she's like, oh no, it's spoopy. I'm back in the spoopy place with my spoopy cat ears. <laughs> and something that we learn now is, oh, that wasn't a ghost. I wonder who that could be. Now it's the only time, question mark, that you, one of the very few times that you actually see another person in the manner of sleep is during the beginning area but you can actually come across other people who are trapped in the mansion. It only happens a few times during the game, though. All right, we are going to be chasing down little Miss Yoshi because, oh my God, people in the dream must must investigate. She doesn't really want anything to do this, though. And of course, just like survival horror fashion, she goes through a door and it's suddenly locked. The game's rather rude like that. But in pure Fatal Frame faction, fashion, a lot of the doors, you take a picture of the door to figure out where you need to take a picture to unlock the door because the camera is also a giant key. But thankfully I've played this game before and I know exactly where I need to go to unlock it, which is right over here. With this ghost, I call him Jeff. I don't actually call him Jeff, I just pulled that name out of thin air right now. But his name is Jeff now. Did the ghosts ever have like actual names in the game? <laughs> actually, yes. <laughs> a lot of them yeah. do, actually. Um, a lot of the ghosts do, but some of them, they have names, but they're more like the monster names. Some of them are named characters, because you have like this char- this ghost right here is just mother because it's a mother and child duo. So she's just mother. There are other ghosts who are ghosts of characters like the main ghost of this game, Reika. So we're playing a character named Ray. The main ghost of this game is Reika. They're voice acted by the same person. They are very heavily like supposed to have all kinds of connections between them like that. So here's a person. An actual person, this is not a ghost. Her name is Yoshi, and we're going to abandon her because we're rude. (laughs) But my favorite ghost name in this whole game has to be Stroller Grandma, or Grandma with Stroller. I can't remember which one it is. (laughs) It's either Stroller Grandma or Grandma with Stroller, and I kid you not, that is the name of the ghost. (laughs) Um... (laughs) And you only, you very rarely see it during um, during normal gameplay. I think in all of my runs of this game, I've only seen it during regular gameplay twice. And one time it killed a run because uh, Stroller Grandma hits like a truck. Hey, look, kitty. Can I, can I, will it let me, will it let me? Ah, oh, darn it. Okay, that's not one of the times when you can interact with the cat. So no cat pets yet. All right, so just like before, this is just going to be a figure out where the trigger to (laughs) progress the storyline in the house is. 
as we just glitch up these stairs, wait for the phone to go off, and turn around and go back and answer the phone. Now, as you go on, and I will point them out occasionally, you will come across spoopy happenings in the house. Hello? All right, so Miku's giving us a call, telling us what's up, that they found the comatose body of the person that we saw in the dream. So that person is still alive. We found her, except she's comatose. Hmm. Now the problem is, the cutscene that I just skipped there, we went to go see the comatose character, and um, she got, for lack of a better term, thanos <laughs> You go and see her in the hospital, and while you're there, she turns into a pile of ash in the hospital bed. We don't know why yet, but that is definitely something that can happen to Kay if we hadn't met that incentive. So, chat, you you saved you saved a man's life. Good job. Proud of you. Proud of you, chat. Alright. So we have time for maybe two donations right now because I'm just going all the way back to where we found the totally alive real person. Sure thing. We have a $125 donation from Tank Treads saying, Earlier, I heard something about a $125 trade. Am I too late for that? Let's go. <laughs> Speaking of $125, if you donate a total of $125 by the end of Frost Fatales, you could win a super ultra rare PS5. And on top of that, you'll be entered to win a Skytech custom gaming PC. So I think that's a great deal. Donate to a great cause, Malala Fun, and enter to win some awesome prizes. You can check out the full prize list at gamesdoneclick.com on the prizes tab. So, um, totally alive, totally alive person is not quite so totally alive anymore because she got Thanos in the real world. So she's not a real person anymore. She is a ghosty goo. She has turned into a boss and we need to take her out. But the problem is we can't actually take her out. Come on. We can't actually take her out until we take out all these weird little ghosts around her. Cool. Now we're just gonna make little circles around her because there's literally nothing you can do until she decides to get up. Thank you, Yoshi. And now we just gotta wait. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on, hello. Oh, I missed it. There we go. Oh, nope, that didn't kill her. Okay, fine. Sometimes she does this. If she goes through the wall, you kind of have to wait. There she is. And she's gone. Poor Yoshi. <gasps> There's a lot of gasps in this game, so if I don't skip the cutscenes fast enough, I apologize. <laughs> But uh, Ray has a tendency to do frightened gasps every time you wake up. All right, do we got a kitty? I mean, we have a kitty right here because kitty ears on the Miku, but I will try to get cat pets. I cannot promise that I will try. So we're going directly into hour two, which is chapter two of this game. So there is a key back there, which is where Yoshi was earlier in the game. We want that key, so we're gonna grab that key. You probably got time for one donation because I'm going to be backtracking a little bit to where we saw Jeff. Hello, Yoshi. Bye-bye, Yoshi. For sure. We have a $200 donation from Karia Mori saying, Fatal Frame has always been my favorite survival horror genre since I played the first one in my PS2. Many nights were had with the fear of broken neck lady sneaking up behind me. Love Frost Vitals and love Malala Fun. The world needs more opportunities for all girls. Thank you for putting on this... All, this all together and the amazing runs from everybody art so is somebody who has uh who doesn't know this game at all uh gallo what are you thinking how are you thinking so far 
Yeah, it seems pretty, pretty scary that <laughs> you could just turn into ash <laughs> like that person. <laughs> yep. That's uh, an interesting atmosphere. One of the uh, earlier cutscenes, you we got to see the main ghost lady, Reika, and she touches you, and that causes a tattoo to start to spread on your body. And what turns you to ash is when the tattoo spreads throughout the, your entire body. Boom. Ash. Wow. So have you played any of the Fatal Frame games? I have not. I have not played any of them. <laughs> I've watched a little bit, but I don't know anything about the series here. <laughs> well, they are very much of the spoopy, though technically are considered Resident Evil clones. On a lot of lists of Resident Evil clones, you'll see Fatal Frame games because sure they have cameras and sure they're not, you know, you're not using guns or bazookas or whatever, but the camera is really just a gun with ammo. Mm. Oh, he's not dead yet. Okay. So I get jumped by these ghosts, and through most of the game, you don't actually interact with any of the random battle ghosts. But this one I do because it seems like it's a random ghost, but he's not actually a random ghost. You do have to defeat him, and it won't let you out of the room until you do. There we go. Because he drops... A puzzle key! And we are going to take that key all the way up towards the uh, top of the manor of sleep, and we're going to do something very dangerous that I do not recommend in real life, and that is walking on a roof. Which you do a fair few times in this game, but I do not recommend it in real life as somebody who has fallen off a roof of a roof before. All right. So this is one of the puzzle types in the game. And essentially the number of lines on each one is how many times you can push it. So if it has three lines, you can push it three times. If it has two, you can push it two. If it has one, you have to push it one. And you have to get it to all of them being able to have all of their uses used, if that makes sense. Thankfully, the puzzles in this game are slightly less obtuse than some of the ones in Fatal Frame 1 or 2, which is kind of nice. Though the downside is you can't really run. She's being careful on the on the roof. <laughs> yeah, being very careful, especially because she's in heels. For some reason. Apparently Ray dreams of being in an office with heels. <laughs> that doesn't seem like a fun dream. Granted, none of this seems like a fun dream. Hello, Ghosty, how you doing? Uh can you not? Thank you. So I'm not actually using um, my regular shot. I'm using what's called the crush lens. The There are two ways that you can do damage in this game. You can either use an ability, which generally you unlock as the game goes on, or you can do a regular shot. For most of the game, for all characters except for Miku, which spoiler alert, we have three playable characters in this game, I'm going to be using ex almost exclusively the powered up lens shots. So crush lens for Ray and the blast lens for K. Miku doesn't get to have special abilities like that because she has even more weird mechanics to her combat that I will get to and actually play as her. There we go. So I just picked up a key, which will let me go into the area. So you... <laughs> So you may have seen that when I went down this corridor, I went through a door and there was this little courtyard with snow falling and then I just turned around and noped out of that room because the other room in that area was locked. I just went and got the key, so now we can open it and go onwards to more adventure. All right, and I open the door. If I button mash loud enough that it probably gets caught on the cam- or caught on the mic. Alrighty. So that, the little ghost man there, that is you. Not Y-O-U-U, -U, y -U, U U Because Japanese naming conventions. So you is Ray's fiance, 
deceased fiance. You as in you, you, not you as in you, oh, you. You's ghost is wandering around the manor of sleep, and each character has a person they are chasing through the manner of sleep throughout the game. Ray is chasing her dead fiance, you. Also, if there's Yoshi in the kitchen, it's the beginning of ghost hauntings in the house. Thankfully, you can't get damaged in the house, but you can see spooky things in the house, and I will point them out. Miku will be chasing her brother, Mafuyu. If you've ever played the first game, you know who Mafuyu is. If you've ever played the fifth game, you know why Mafuyu is unfortunate. And now we're going to break into Miku's room because she left something on her desk. And the character that Kay is chasing, well, we will just we will just wait on that one. We'll just wait until we get to play as Kay. I'll, I'll leave that one as a little bit of a surprise if you haven't played this game. So here's a picture of him. The man in that picture is Mafuyu, Miku's brother, who, if you played Fatal Frame 1, he is he is the person you play in the prologue of that game. There we go. Do we and know how is, come her fiancé died? Yes, um, I mentioned it earlier that she got into a car crash. Um, oh. In the intro cutscene, you see the direct aftermath of the car crash of Ray sort of coming out of the crashed vehicle and coming up to her fiance's uh, body. Hello, Ghost Yugu. Bye bye, Ghost Yugu. Now, prior to the game's events, every one of the characters had some sort of loss. Miku lost her brother, Mufuyu, in the first game. Rei lost you, her fiance, in a car crash that she was the driver in. So Rei got out of the car crash with absolutely no injuries, but she was the one who crashed the car. So she tends, so she blames herself for the entire game for the death of her fiance. Yes. And Kay, poor, poor old Kay, is the uncle of a character that uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about when we get when we get there, because he's technically the only person of the three who's not chasing a ghost. He's actually chasing a person, a living person. But now we're just going to creepily follow a ghost girl. Because that's always a good idea in a Fatal Frame game. <laughs> now this is another one of those, take a picture of the locked door, go take a picture elsewhere to unlock the door. Now, I got a surprise. And that surprise is Ghosty. He's gonna hit me. Yep, <clears throat> every time. I've never been able to figure out why, <laughs> why he can hit me there. But thankfully, I shouldn't really have to worry about it. So I will only bother healing if I see the filament come up. It's in the uh, bottom. I can't remember if it's the bottom left or bottom right off the top of my head, but the filament, if the filament pops up, you've got a ghost around you. And then that's spoopy. We don't like that. I mean, we do like that because it's horror block, but it, it, it's spoopy. But I do find it kind of funny that I'm closing horror block to GDQ, <laughs> GDQ charity events in a row. <laughs> so you've got time for probably God, two or three donations because we are going all the way back to where one of the very first pictures I took was right after getting the camera. Excellent. And I'm actually, wow, happy to report back to you guys that we just hit over 62,000 rays for Malala Fund. Thank you so much for your generous contributions to a fantastic cause. And just a reminder to everybody, Malala Fund is working for a world where all girls can learn and lead. Malala Fund advocates for resources and policy changes needed to give all girls a secondary education invest in local education leaders and amplifies the voices of girls fighting for change so thank you everybody you can learn more at malala.org keep going and we have a 25 dollar donation from cho saying this game has me so freaked out i once jumped in fear in ray's house because i didn't see ruri as she meowed as i went past her <laughs> i love this series thanks so much for showcasing it 
that can happen as you're going through the house Rudy can randomly meow if you get within vicinity of her but not necessarily when she's in camera or when she's in like camera view and it's really loud but you still got you still got time so give me some more for sure we have $30 from Eldridge saying horror block is my favorite of any GDQ event comfy spoopy vibes to everyone watching and a twenty dollar donation from M and J saying support of Spectralite and the Malala Fund. Thank you, Spectralite, telling us for telling us about this amazing gathering of love, social progress, inequality, and gaming. Here's to educating young women around the world. Thank you, everybody, for your generous contributions. All right, so coming up here is way, 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 way back in I don't know twenty minutes ago. We were about here, there was little Yoshi back when she was still alive, sitting down there, and we're going to actually work down here and take this picture. Now, it takes away camera control, or it takes away control, so I can't actually do anything right now. I have to actually wait for the door to, for the door to unlock or the lock to go away. All right, so remember that, remember the door where I took the lock, or I took the picture off the lock? to to show me where to go. We have to go all the way back there. I love this game to death, but it does have quite a bit of backtracking. So go ahead and give me some more donations. For sure. We have a $25 donation from Anonymous saying, donation trains for pets, pet the cat and or bunnies. Here are five tickets to start donation train for pets. Yes, guys, let's go ahead and start a, a a five dollar donation train and by the way if you donate a minimum of 25 dollars you'll be entered to win an oled um nintendo switch so cool prizes donate to a good cause let's get this train going i would love to actually get my hands on either the switch oled or the ps5 <laughs> i have been As unlucky I. I have gotten neither <laughs> i've gotten neither of them um, for those who don't know me, uh, as a hobby, I refurbish old PlayStation consoles or old consoles in general. I have probably 40 PS1s in my garage right now. <laughs> um, so not having a PlayStation console, it, it, it wrecks me. It wrecks me. So one of, one of these days, maybe this time, I'll have to make sure that I donate for that incentive. Y'all should too. Is probably going to be the only way you're going to be able to get a PS5 for a while. Okay, you got time for probably another two or three donations because we got a while to walk back. Yes, for sure. We have a $500 donation from Char Bunny saying there was an actual bunny. Happy face, happy face, happy face. Did Char Bunny miss the bunny? I feel sad now. <laughs> Well, maybe if we can reach, I don't know, give, give, me a, give me a goal. If we can reach a certain amount by the end of the run, maybe I'll pull out the other bunny. Because, yes, there's two of them. You may see them in the background, but I will bring, I'll bring one of them up. I'll bring the other one that you guys didn't see up close up to say hi. I just don't know for how much. Everybody, this, this is high stakes right now. You get to have an up close and personal bunny cam. Um, and I've just been informed that we have a new incentive. Let's say um, if we can push three thousand five hundred dollars uh, to unlock the Tails bus, a uh, boss rush uh, for Sonic the Hedgehog Forever. If met, Flying Fox will complete a boss rush with Tails following the Sonic the Hedgehog Forever showcase. So, Bunny Cam and Tails boss rush. Anybody? Let's get those donations rolling. Actually, funny that you mentioned bunny cam. I actually have a bunny cam on my Twitch. <laughs> oh, the bunnies so have cute. their own Excellent. dedicated webcam on my Twitch stream. That's awesome. So you may see that I sort of stopped in the other room there because the filament popped up and because the, mu the uh, battle music started. I did that specifically because I didn't want to risk getting killed on the way back just in case. Because that particular hallway that I went through when I stopped to use the only healing item that you get yeah, that's the hallway that I've had Stroller Grandma show up in. <laughs> and um, I would rather not. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna click this and suddenly there's a ghost. Oh no, ghosty girl. So there are four 
main ghost children in this game. All Fatal Frame games have their ghost children. Now these ones, thankfully, don't fly yet. They will eventually. <laughs> and when they start flying, it gets a little bit more dicey. That's when things start to get really dangerous. So when the children start to fly, you know things are getting dicey. Just, just keep that in mind. When children start to fly, things are getting dicey. <laughs> Are there ever any, like, friendly ghosts in this game? <laughs> yes and no. Yeah, yes, 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 there are. Um, I don't think Fatal Frame 1 has any really friendly ghosts. Fatal Frame 2 has, like, one. <laughs> um, this game has... Uh, one and a half, two and a half? Three. No, we'll say three. <laughs> it's one of them is sort of like, is is he is he nice? Is he not? Um, I will point them out when we get to them, but you've seen one of them already. So technically you, um, the ghost of Ray's fiance, is a nice ghost. He never attacks you or anything. Mm. Um, there is Mafuyu's ghost. Um, went during Miku's sections. He never attacks you. And also during Miku's sections, there is a little ghost girl called Amane. So I just had a boss fight against one ghost girl. There is four of them in the game. Three of them are hostile. One of them is never hostile during the main game. I think there is one of the like challenge fights that you can do against her. Okay. So instead of going directly to sleep, this is going to be one of the times that you actually have to do something during the nighttime section. Now, for some reason, the game makes you go talk to Miku because you got a letter from Kay saying, hey, sometimes when people have lost someone, they get pulled into the manner of sleep. And the game doesn't actually let you go to, go to sleep to go to the next chapter until you've talked to Miku because guess what? It's time to play as Miku. We will no longer, can I, can I, can I, can I? Oh, darn it. Okay, still, still cannot pet the cat. I tried. I tried chat. Does Miku have a camera as well? Or oh, she's a bit yes. different to play as? Oh, yeah, cool. Um, Ray and Kay both have their gimmicks. During a speedrun, during New Game Plus speedrun at least, you never use Kay's gimmick. Kay's gimmick is entirely useless <laughs> um, in terms of a speedrun. But Miku's gimmick is really useful. The downside of Miku though, and if you guys have ever played Fatal Frame 1, you should know this area. It is literally the opening room of Fatal Frame 1 because the Manor of Sleep incorporates specific rooms from Fatal Frame 1 and Fatal Frame 2 into it, so it's sort of a nostalgia trip. But Miku's special ability is apparently being scared of candle flames and taking way too long. Okay, her special ability is she can um, turn into Neo from the Matrix in terms of uh, slowing down time and being able to dodge things she shouldn't be able to dodge because of that. Now, technically, in a new game, you wouldn't have access to it until after the um, first mini-boss, I should say, which happens in literally the next room from here. But because I'm on New Game Plus, I can use it already, nice. which is going to... <laughs> yeah, which is going to make a complete joke of this boss. It's my favorite thing about New Game Plus. You play New Game, you struggle, and everything's difficult. And then you play New Game, and you just completely destroy everything. So I have to look at this door and realize I can't open it because I don't have the puzzle key. So, oh no, whatever shall I do? I guess I'll just run away. Oh no, there's a ghost man with a giant cleaver. So I'm just going to sl casually slow down time and turn around. Just casually slowing down time. Mm, two and three and he's dead so unlike with K and with uh, Ray I can't use the super powerful powered up crush lens or blast or yeah blast lens I can't use any of the special lenses in the game as Miku but the upside is one she can slow down time and two um, she does double damage. She has the ability to charge up her camera times two, 
instead of just the regular one-time charge. So usually if you if I wasn't playing on New Game Plus, you would see the camera charge up the longer you were on an enemy. But because I'm on New Game Plus, I have access to something called the Festival Lens, I think it's called. It's either like the Festival Lens or Festival Attachment or something. And what that does is um, my camera shots will always be maxed and I will never use film. So every shot I do will do max damage and because Miku does double damage normally, she's kind of a cannon. Okay, where is she? Where are you? Where are you? So we got attacked by a ghost. This is my second favorite ghost in the game. Okay, she's gonna grab me, isn't she? Yup! Oh! <laughs> nope, get off. So what I just did there is called a dodge. Um, if, there we go. If you attack, okay. If you can use your um, attack button at a very precise moment of getting grabbed by a ghost, instead of getting grabbed, you do a little flash and Thankfully, that one prevents damage and two gives you a second to turn around and actually hit them. Okay, let's see if I can remember how to do this. This puzzle always trips me up. There we go. First try, first try, every try. <laughs> All right. So, those who know Fatal Frame definitely know these areas. I was supposed to skip that cutscene. Darn it. Yeah. Sometimes the camera will auto lock onto the nearest enemy so long as I wait a half second after the cutscene. I did not wait, so it didn't happen, but it's fine. The fight's done. Now, you may think that I'm getting through these fights really, really fast, but trust me, had you guys not gotten that uh, up difficulty upgrade incentive, I would literally be killing every boss in a single hit. Which is one reason why I love New Game Plus, especially if you're new to Fatal Frame speedrunning, because it's definitely very beginner friendly. <laughs> Alright. So Miku has had enough of this because she's been having this dream for a very long time. So she is just going to try and leave. Because funnily enough, there are one, two. Just two? Yeah, just two. Um, there are two exits from the dream and you can actually go back to the waking the waking world at any moment um, in case you run out of uh, camera film or just feel like it through a door like that with those little blue candles. But we're not gonna do that because that's slow. And I don't have to worry about that because I'm on New Game Plus. I don't have to worry about refilling my camera. So that little ghost girl, the one that you just saw to answer your question from earlier, is Amane. Amane doesn't want us to go because our brother is totally in this direction. Our ghost brother. To totally in this direction. Over here. To totally safe. Ah, I messed up the glitch. <laughs> So that was an example of how you can accidentally mess up the stair skip. I did it too early on the stairs, so Miku sort of juddered, stopped, and then went slow for a second. So we didn't find the brother. Instead, we found a totally not evil Reika. All right, now let's go on cat hunt. Let's see if I can find the cat. So if ever you leave one of the rooms in the house and you get sort of a grainy effect on the screen that means that there is a ghost haunting in the house and if you look directly to my right there's feet there's ghost feet <laughs> there's ghost feet in my house it's yoshi yoshi's haunting my house and she will haunt your house for the entire game you will just find her in random places Miku. Miku. It gives us this Where dramatic Dutch I camera angle so to say hi to Miku. I couldn't sleep. 
Now you gotta talk to her twice. Cause you gotta get some information about Kay. Our our poor our poor man Kay. Poor man goes through so much. <laughs> and we will now be playing as him. So it is now time to see the third playable character. This is Kay. He gets fox ears instead of cat ears. And he has been in the manner of sleep the longest. Now, unlike the other characters where it's implied that they are relatively new to getting pulled into the manner of sleep, Ray or Kay has been there the longest, so he's already being chased by the main ghost. Also, you guys should recognize that little person that we just saw, if you've ever played Fiddle Frame 2. Yes, Kay is in fact the uncle of Mio and Mayu, the player character and the player character's twin sister from Fatal Frame 2. And it's implied the reason why he's been in the manner of sleep so much longer than the other characters is because he is mourning the passing of Mayu, the twin sister. Which is how we know which ending of Fatal Frame 2 is canon. So this ghost here is going to be haunting this room for the entire game and a couple other areas, but mostly just this room. She really, 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 really wants to give Kay a hug. We really, really don't want her to give Kay a hug. But she's also my, one of my favorite ghosts in this game because she has one of the most iconic faces. If, if we ever get a shot of her that's close enough and you actually look at her face, she has almost the same expression as the overly attached girlfriend meme. Which makes me chuckle. <laughs> like, it is the same little creepy smile. <laughs> All right. So we got a little glimpse. We've had a couple glimpses of Reka, the main antagonist ghost. Each ghost has a main antagonist ghost. Now, the thing about Reka is she actually shows up a lot more than Saye did in two or Kirie did in one. Because guess what? There she is, you guys. Yeah, she actually tries to attack you much, much, much earlier in the game than the main antagonist ghosts of the other games do. So I'm going to have to be a little careful here because I really don't want to get hit. But I have a really bad time usually getting hit here. So I'm going to have to be careful. Okay, come on. Come on, turn around. Turn around. Come on. There we go. All right, so I'm going to try and see if I can lead her this way. All right, ship, okay, we're good. So that was me being safe. Usually I go straight for the camera, which is right over here. Because the thing about Nightmare is everything in the game does more than half, at least more than half of your HP bar and damage. So even random ghosts can two-shot you which makes the game very dangerous. <laughs> Even if I may make it seem really easy. All right, so yet again, another one of those, take a picture of the door, go to a place and take a picture of another thing. Door locks. Which we're going to have to go back to, hello Yashu. By the way, this ghost's name is Yashu. Not Yoshi, Yashu. So I'm going to have to go all the way back to where I picked up the holly key a moment ago. So you've got time for a mm, one or two donations. Excellent. We have a $25 donation from Make It Chibi saying, first time donating and so excited to be able to. I was very excited when I heard that Miss Garlic Tanager was coming back to speedrun Fatal Frame 3, especially since they rocked the Kuon speedrun. Loving the energy makes the game not as spooky and very fun while also donating for a great cause. And we have a $130 donation from the Arcadia Collective saying, Our community hosted a game night at our event space tonight to raise money for Malala Fun. Thanks for putting all this good into the world on behalf of us here in Detroit. All right. And, Come on. and the door is unlocked. Cool. So you probably got time for another donation or two because now we just have to go back to that door from before. Uh, Kay, can you please turn around? Thank you. Now we just for have sure. to go all the way back there. Okay, sounds great. We have a $25 donation from Nadio saying, some money for the bunny. Thank you. 
and a $13 donation from Captain Clown saying, A spoopy donation for a spoopy block. Heart. I do have to say, Fatal Frame 3 is my favorite of the Fatal Frames, and I own all of them. In fact, I own more than one copy of Fatal Frame 5 because of the remaster that just came out recently, but I even imported... <laughs> Fatal Frame 4 was never released outside of Japan, which is why in the US, Fatal Frame 5 is just called Fatal Frame Made in a Blackwater instead of Fatal Frame 5 Made in a Blackwater. But Fatal Frame 4 was never released outside of Japan, so I actually imported a Japanese copy of it. I don't have a Japanese Wii, so I can't play it without uh, doing certain things to my Wii. But, yeah, I do actually have a Japanese copy of the fourth game. Have you run some of the other Fatal Frame speedruns? Not three? yet. Not yet, but I am planning on it because I do love them. I just have to make sure that I've got this one just completely down pat. And I will be going to the new game category eventually, but I am the world record holder for every single difficulty of New Game Plus. <laughs> even, uh, I can see that we have a cloud mark in the chat. I even took one of his world records at one point. Come on. All right, so I'm gonna see if I can do a dodge here. I'm not able to do it every single time, but I go to the left of the stairs and then I turn to the right. Okay, I did it. It took me a while to figure that out. It used to be where she would hit me every single time I went down the stairs. And the way that she hits you is she throws hands. She just she just throws hands at you, just flying hands. Come out of that little hand tree behind her. <laughs> but anyway, we got the butterfly key. And if you know anything about Fatal Frame 2, Fatal Frame 2 really likes butterflies. And because Mio is very much a Fatal Frame 2 character, well... The door that she went through is locked by the butterfly key. So I just have to go back over there and go say hello to the protagonist of Fatal Frame 2. Who's totally fine. And not crazy. She might be a little bit. <laughs> just a touch. Because Kay, unlike Miku and Rei, is chasing a living person throughout the mansion. So Rei is chasing you, and Miku is chasing Mafuyu, Kei is chasing Mio, Mio is chasing Mayu. So it's just a just stream of trying to chase each other <laughs> through this through this wild, wild spoopy mansion. Alright, and now we are in the Fatal Frame 2 area of the game, and there's Mio. But suddenly Kay wakes up and she can't say hi to her. So this is one of a couple times where you wake wake up, quote unquote, and it's still nighttime. It only happens a couple times in the game. So we're hearing spoopy sounds. And who here has seen Juwan or the American version, The Grudge? Anyone? So if you've seen The Grudge or Juwan, um, if I was to watch this cutscene, which I'm not because that's slow, if you've ever seen The Grudge and you've seen the part of the movie where a character goes up into the attic and then gets something chasing after them, that's what happened in that cutscene. But thankfully, it was just a dream. Nothing bad happens in a dream, you guys. Nothing. Nothing bad ever happens in dreams. Alright, so we're gonna go right back up to where she had the spooky dream. Because for some reason, the Spirit Stone radio from Fatal Frame 2 is up here. I don't think it's the exact same Spirit Stone radio, but for some reason it's in this random house. Even though this house doesn't really have anything to do with Fatal Frame 2. Okay, now we are going into hour six. Yes, hour six. What does the radio do? Now, in Fatal Frame 2, it only makes an appearance once in this game. But in Fatal Frame 2, you can collect little, like, crystals, little stones. And you can listen to them using the Spirit Stone radio in order to hear, like, 
the last thoughts of the ghost that the stone came from. So it's sort of just like lore kinds of things. Mm, I see. But in this game, it actually does make a very important appearance, but not until the very end of the game. So we pick it up there and then we forget about it until like literally the last chapter of the game. All right, so I took a picture there and the point of this entire chapter is that photo had four ghosts in it. We need to go find all four of those ghosts in different parts of the mansion and uh, take their portrait. And by take their portrait, I mean have a fight with them. <laughs> don't, don't mind the strawberry jelly on the ground, you guys. It's, it's just strawberry jam. There's some more strawberry jam on the ground. Don't mind it. It's fine. <laughs> Wasn't there in the last stream. The ghosts in that room really like their strawberry jam. Jam or jelly, it is both jam and jelly simultaneously. So... Not this chapter, but I think it's the next one after this is one part of the game that gets a little dicey on Nightmare. So it's not this one, but it's the next one after this. But it will be us going through the same area I'm going through right now. But just, just keep that in mind that the area I'm about to go into will soon be a little dicey. So Ray saw a little ghost child, a little ghost girl up here. So she decides to go follow the little ghost girl, which always ends well in a Fatal Frame game. Always. <laughs> Except when it doesn't, which is every time. So where is she going? Oh, is she gonna pop up yet? There she is! Everyone say hi to Ghost Girl. She's rude. Okay, yeah, I got one hit. I can't one shot her, sadly. Well, sad for sad for me, I guess. Is she, oh, she did hit me. Okay, good. Ah, oh, darn it, I missed. Okay. Don't don't hit me. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Don't hit me yet. I'm going slow. Don't hit me yet. <laughs> No, I'm not hurt. Leave me alone. <laughs> so the thing about those ghost children is you fight them maybe 12 times in this game. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That is one of the ghosts that they reuse a lot. And I guess later on, they just want to try and make it a little bit more, you know, we're totally not reusing the same boss over and over again by instead giving them the ability to fly. <laughs> when you're on those planks with her, is it possible to fall off those planks? Thankfully, no. <laughs> okay, that's good then. <laughs> yeah, thankfully it's not, because if it was, oh dear. Yeah, this is not, this is not Silent Hill 3. Yeah, no, like I can walk directly into them and nothing happens. The downside is, though, um, you can't run on them. <laughs> yeah, I was noticing she was being very, very careful on them. <laughs> yeah, it's just like when she's walking along the roofs, which is in the next chapter going to be what makes this a little dicey. Because we are going to have to come back up here and we are going to get attacked by that little girl again. But the problem is, oh my God, like 75% of the time she hits me. <laughs> And because it's on Nightmare, it, it makes it a little dicey. Because if she manages to hit me twice, that's game over, unless I can manage to get a heal on in time. And because we do not yet have the item called the uh, Spirit Stone, which saves you from death one time, since we don't have that yet, it is actually game over, so I will probably save, just in case. But you were saying? 
Yeah, I was just gonna ask if this game has checkpoints or like if you die, it brings you back to your last save. Nope. <laughs> this is P this is PS2 era. Yeah. We don't we don't have that. <laughs> we don't get that. Nope. PS2 era. We don't get auto saves. Um, <laughs> which normally I would never save during a run of this game because it is generally fairly safe. Even though I am on Nightmare, it is generally fairly safe. At least, at least because I played it so many times. But sure, there's going to be a couple times that just for marathon safety, I will do a save before we start a chapter. Okay, I'm in the right spot. Yep. Cool. Oh, that's all I meant to. Come on. There we go. All right. And click. And that is the first of the four ghosts we have. Four ghosts we have to kill. <laughs> I can count. So it says that we're getting these new abilities for the camera, but we're really not because I already have them. <laughs> All right. So because this is Nightmare, there is going to be a couple times in the game where I do actually pick up film, even though I don't actually use film when I use the camera on New Game Plus. Because Miku and Kay start with a stronger film. They start with the Type 60 film, but Ray only ever starts with Type 14 and Type 7. So because of that, there will be a couple times like just then where I do pick up film as Ray just to give her the ability to use stronger film. Just to make uh, later fights a little bit, a little bit more palatable. A little bit less wisdom toothy. Alright, so we are coming up to the second of the four ghosts. Now, if you remember from earlier in the game, I had to take a picture here to unlock something. And it's the same ghost, except now he has tattoos all over his face. And that's number two. Two down, two to go. All right, we got time for, we got time for two donations before I get to the next one. Sure thing. We have a $155 donation from Cyanide Sugar, who was a runner for Resident Evil 2 Remake, saying, For getting all the Zombo bites in my RE2 run. <laughs> Thank you so much for your contribution. <laughs> that was a fun run. Resident um, Evil 2 is definitely one that I need to do again. It was my second speedrun oh. I ever did, was Resident Evil Ooh. 2 Remake. Can't wait for you to come back if you do decide to. Yeah. But you can give me one more. Sure, we have a $25 donation from Bookworm42. No comment, but thank you so much for your contribution to Malala Fun. All right, so we got a ghost coming up here, but we're just gonna ignore him. He's not important. Because the ghost we actually want is down here by this little entrance here that could take me out of the dream, but instead I'm just going to remember to actually bring up my camera. There we go. Now, hopefully, the ghost down the hallway doesn't reach me before this other guy does. I'm gonna keep my eye on it, though. Okay, you know what? <laughs> Just for safety. <laughs> I did have to hit him. Usually, I don't have to hit the second ghost. But once one of the ghosts goes down, the other one just vanishes. But he decided to be mean today, so I had to knock him down a peg. So we got a key earlier, that quite a bit earlier actually, that I haven't used yet, but we're gonna be able to use it now, which is going to give us the ability to do, uh, to, I can speak right now. We're gonna be doing another one of those sliding puzzles in, in a little bit here. So we have to use a key to get another key to get into a place to use another key. Cause this is definitely a game that shares DNA with Resident Evil. Hello there, ghost lady. Bye-bye, ghost lady. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna go over here and pick up this. 
Now we have the second most powerful type of film for Ray. That's gonna make some fights later much easier. Now, do you all remember when I went to that locked door as Miku in her very first chapter when I told you guys all about how she can freeze time? I have to go all the way back there. So we've got time for uh, two donations. Excellent. We have a $25 donation from Nintendo PC. No comment. Thank you for your contribution. And we also have another $25 donation from Leia S with no comment. But thank you so much for your contribution to Malala Fund. I could probably give me another another donation since those don't have comments. Sure, for sure. We have a one hundred and fifty dollar donation from Wampa Stampa, saying, "Yay, GDQ! Keep up the great work, everyone." All right. So now we're going into the realm of Fatal Frame One again, because this entire area is very interconnected. Though, funnily enough, we're going to spend more time in the areas of Fatal Frame 2 than Fatal Frame 1. It's just, it front loads a lot of the Fatal Frame 1 areas. So this little area has that puzzle, and this one I sometimes have a hard time with. So let's see if I can actually remember how to do this. I'm focusing a little. All right, first try, every try. <laughs> Good. <laughs> because there's not really any way to memor- At least not for me, there's not really been a way to memorize the solution to those puzzles. You just have to get good at them. So you see, I almost one-shot that guy because I had this type 9 film. Okay, where is he? Where is he? There he is. Now, the reason I went forward there instead of sort of hanging back and waiting for him is what you don't know is when that guy spawns, it spawns two or three ghosts right behind Ray, and I didn't want to get hit by them. So we have to go all the way back to the door at the beginning of the chapter. So you've got time for quite a few donations. <laughs> For sure. Uh, before we get into donations, I just want to remind everybody that the Yeti is donating $5 to Malala Fund for every shirt sold. We have an amazing design featuring some characters from our Frost Fatales Marathon, including Rei Kurosawa from Fatal Frame 3. So check out the awesome artwork and be sure to snag some swag from the Yeti's official Frost Fatales 2022 collection at theyeti.com. I'm definitely going yeah. to have to get one of those t-shirts because it has Ray <laughs> on it. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. I, as will I. <laughs> and going to some donations here, $25 from Garnet saying, Back again for another dono. Work's been keeping me busy this week, so I haven't been able to watch live much, but what I have been able to catch both on Twitch and from YouTube uploads has been great. Thanks for all your hard work, y'all. You're all doing awesome. Thank you for catching our VODs and, and, and supporting our runners and our cause. Appreciate that very, very much. All right. So I happened to see in the chat somebody mentioning the director's cut of the Fatal Frame games. And yes, Fatal Frame 1 and 2 got uh, quote unquote director's cuts that came out for Xbox that had some quality of life changes and some uh, extra endings. Sadly, Fatal Frame 3 did not get the same treatment. So the only way that you can play this game is to play the PS2 version, which for PS2 era horror games and older horror games in general, it's actually not that expensive to get a copy of this game comparatively, which is nice. But you can also get it digitally on PSN. You can get one, two, and three on PSN. So if y'all wanna, if y'all wanna so show this game some love and get into it yourself, you can do that. So we're just gonna listen to this totally fine phone call. Yes. Speaking. I noticed that the ghost feet went in the same place <laughs> from <Yep>. earlier. <laughs> yep, there will be many, many times where the ghosty goos just jump around the house. Now, I'm not gonna show the vast majority of them because literally every time you go in and out of a room, now is the cat on the... I'm gonna waste a couple seconds here just checking something. Oh, there's a, go there's a ghost right there. Ghost has possessed my TV, okay. All I was trying to do was check for the cat. 
<sighs> Instead, I got a possessed television. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No kitty yet, you guys. I'm trying. I'm trying. There's only very specific times where you can interact with the cat. But yes, that was a completely, totally normal phone call. And, well, actually, no, it wasn't. It wasn't, let's be honest. Uh, Yoshi is now inhabiting the phone lines of the house. So pretty much every time from here on, when you have a phone call with somebody, you will have Yoshi screaming at you in the background. So now we are back to playing as Little Miss Miku. Now the entire point of this one, of this chapter, is relatively similar in a way to the last chapter. We are going to four different areas to instead of take out four different ghosts, we're going to be picking up four different orbs. And yes, I say use that word for a reason. But we got to go pick up some orbs so we can do a puzzle with orbs. very GDQ-esque. So one little thing about this game is Miku and Kei specifically can do some things in the mansion that, the other, that each of the other characters can't. Miku, for some reason, is considered small compared to K or Ray, and she can squeeze herself into vents. So we are going to go into first person mode for a minute and just to go through a vent and it's gonna be completely fine and we're not gonna get attacked at all. But K can push bookshelves around in some specific areas to open up parts of the game. We're only gonna use that a couple times. We'd only use it once if it was a normal, uh, if it was a uh, normal ending run, but since it is a good ending run, we'll be using it twice. Right, so there is a ghost, and suddenly we have gone. I can aim. We have gone slow-mo. Because this ghost decided she wanted to say hi. But sadly, we do not say hi to little ghost children, and she is gone. I notice sometimes when you take the snapshots that there's like these blue orbs that come out. Is that to regain health, or what is... What is that for? Um, it's... I can't remember exactly. Uh, they're sort of like damage amplifiers. So one thing you can do if you're playing this game normally or playing it casually on a new game is you take photos, normal photos, and it can cause little spirit orbs to come out of the ghosts. And if you take a picture of the ghost again with uh, more of those spirit orbs in the camera like in the frame it does a little bit more damage because it counts as like a higher level shot a higher level camera shot oh, but because yeah so it's one of the things about the gameplay that you don't normally really see on new game plus because my camera is so powerful yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so now we're being chased by a ghost called the engraver now there's two of them, but thankfully for all but once, really, we only ever see one at a time. Now, part of the plot of this game is just like every single Fatal Frame game, insert ritual here, ritual goes wrong, shenanigans happen, everyone uh, has a very bad day. <laughs> and then somebody has to come along years and years later to fix that bad day. Now, in this game, you have the main ghost, the main antagonist, Ghost Reika. She is covered head to toe in these tattoos that she is given in order to help relieve the grief and the pain and the suffering of people who have experienced loss. Am I being chased by a random ghost right now? Weird. Um, and as part of that ritual, she would then have to be impaled by four child priestesses, which is the four ghost children we've been seeing. Now, the engravers are the lovely ladies who have been blinded, just like in Fatal Frame 1, except their job in this game is to engrave the tattoos on the main antagonist. 
The thing is, because now they're evil ghosties, they want to give you some tattoos too. We, we don't want their tattoos. where I have to go because this is the point in the game where it starts to get a little squirrely trying to remember where exactly I need to go at any time. All right, so here's the dangerous part. So I'm gonna have to focus for a second here. Don't hit me, 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 don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Oh, she came within about a frame of hitting me there. Please don't hit me, 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 please don't hit me. I have actually lost runs here before because she's managed to hit me twice before getting out. Am I free? Because I can't run here, I can't really dodge her very easily. Yeah, can't run away from them if they're really close. <laughs> yeah, okay, we're good. We're good, I got out without getting hit. And it is largely RNG whether or not I can get out of there without getting hit. Now I could turn around and just hit her with a couple shots to take care of her, but that takes time. And this is a speed run. The speed run's already two and a half hours long. <laughs> we don't need to be adding more minutes to it, except we will be because we'll be saving okay, but you know, it is what it is. All right, I'm just gonna be going to collect a couple orbs from a few rooms in this little main hub area here. So we've got time for a couple donations. For sure, we have a $250 donation from X with no comments. Thank you so much for your contribution to Malala Fund and supporting our runners. And we also have a $25 donation from Venska Fish with no comment. Thank you so much again for your contribution as well. All right, we got some time for a couple more. For sure. A uh, $10 donation coming in from Oh Pizza Yeah. Continue to do your great work. Gotta go fast. This and another $10 donation from Anonymous with no comment, but thank you so much for your contribution. All right, still got time for a couple more because I'm just, I'm just collecting some orbs. Yeah, I'll take this time to actually shout out uh, an incentive that we have going on right now. We actually have a one thousand dollars and sixty-three or one thousand sixty-three dollars. I, I can speak totally. Um, <laughs> raised for the Tails Boss Rush incentive for Sonic the Hedgehog Forever. If met at three thousand five hundred, Falling Fox will complete a boss rush with Tails following the Sonic the Hedgehog Forever showcase. So be sure to get those donations in. All right. So yeah, somebody mentioned it in chat and I probably should point it out. Yes, my rabbits are named Garrus and Tally and they are named after exactly who you think they are, if you recognize those names. The white one is Tally and the gray one is Garrus. Now they want you guys to donate for charity. So are you guys gonna disappoint the bunnies? I hope not. Look at them, they're too cute to disappoint. <laughs> All right, so I got a little ways to go and a little bit of backtracking to get to the next orb. So you still got a time for about mm, two donations. For sure. Uh, we have a $15 donation from Nadio and uh, it's saying for $15 more to the runner, face your fear of frantic phrases and flashing lights in fatal frame by repeating this fable of a comment for Frost with towels. That's a, that's a bit of a tongue twister there, huh? <laughs> All right, so we are coming up on the fourth orb, which since I'm a nightmare, the fight that comes after getting this orb can get a little dicey, but because I have slow-mo and I'll be able to actually go around at my normal speed, it's not as dangerous. I haven't lost a run to it before, but <laughs> marathon luck being what it is. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna be uh, being a little sus right now. We're gonna be a little sus. We're gonna go into some vents because Miku is the imposter. She's the imposter of this game. She can go into vents. But turns out there's an imposter for the imposter. There's a ghost in the vents. She can't do anything though because we're just gonna go past her. 
unless the game locks you in a room, there isn't really any ghosts that you have to fight in this game. Funnily enough. All right, now we have our fourth orb. All right. Okay. And we are going to have to have a fight against our first fight against more than one little girl ghost. We have to fight against two of them, which is fine. Later, it's going to get even worse. We're going to have to fight against three of them at once. Okay, I'm immediately going to do this. I think I was too high up. Oh, oh. Please don't hurt me. That's not very nice. Okay, they missed. Cool. So just from marathon safety, I'm actually going to keep slow-mo going for as much of this fight as I can because it increases my reaction time for the fight. I'm gonna wait a half second with it off here so you guys can get a very good look at what it looks like. Okay. I don't think I'm gonna have a, no, I'm not, okay. And there we go. Because while I was practicing this run, this fight did actually almost kill me. It was almost the first time I lost a run to it. <laughs> She's not. One more hit. Did I get it? Okay, apparently I didn't. <laughs> I should have. One more hit and the fight will be done. Hello, little ghost child. Goodbye, little ghost child. Sadly, you have to wait a second. And now I can open the door. There has been times where I've accidentally tried to open the door too quickly and it just goes, you can't open the door, it's locked. All right, now we gotta go take the orbs back to where we started the chapter and do a little orb puzzle that will show you guys the first real instance of the song in this game. So Fatal Frame, where am I going? Right. So Fatal Frame 1 had Kagome Kagome is a little song in it. I don't think Fatal Frame 2 had a song that played except for the one over the credits. This game has creepy ghost children singing a song about um, impaling a shrine maiden. So get used to it. It's going to get sung quite a few times. <laughs> And fun, no, fun little anecdotal story. I was uh, singing the song in the shower once and my roommate <laughs> knocked on my door going, are you okay? Because <laughs> the song's really creepy. <laughs> okay, so now we're just gonna touch the orbs and use the orbs in the correct orientation for the song and the song's done. the lyrics so we can sing along um there is only like there's only one time toward the later part of the game where you pretty much have to uh see the whole hear the whole song at once really like really legibly it's towards the end of the game and i don't know maybe maybe i'll sing it <laughs> i'm not the best singer but <laughs> oh, come on there she goes that's two. One more shot should take out this box. Okay, you know what? Slow mo. <laughs> Please don't mind this uh, total inability to aim here. I swear I'm good at this game. <laughs> I, I, I am, I, I promise. All right, so we gotta go talk to Miku again. Because we had a dream that wasn't ours, so we gotta go say hi to her. She has the kitty again. The kitty likes to hang out in Miku's room. Sadly, because that means less cat. <laughs> and I know the internet likes their cats. Ooh, the 
cat is indeed awake on the couch. Can I say hi to the cat? That is what I need to look at to go onwards in the game, but. Here. Yes, hello, Miku. Miku is the Ray's uh, former fiance okay. was a folklorist, as everybody in Fatal Frame tends to be. It's raining again. And his assistant was Miku, so Miku did all the research for him. Lately, oh come on, don't don't don't, oh, don't do me like this, Miku, please, pass. please, I want to talk to the cat. <laughs> Chat, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. Miku, Miku is preventing me from giving pets to the cat because the triggers overlap each other. I'm sorry, chat. I tried. I like how it's like you're like, um, let me pet the cat, and then Miku's in like cat ears, so she might be like, oh, you mean me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're going to pet. <laughs> we're going to pat Miku's head. <laughs> we're going to give her some pats. So this is the first instance of actually needing to use the radio, and the radio is actually going to be used in a glitch later on. But that's towards the end of the game. Now, I totally listened to those tapes. Just don't don't pay attention to the fact that I immediately exited out of them. <laughs> but you have to listen to both of those tapes before it goes into nighttime mode. And now we are back as Kay, the man who you all saved. This man will survive this game because of your donations. We are back in Fatal Frame 2, Oville. And it's gonna be very Fatal Frame 2 for a hot minute here. Now we need to go find a two keys in order to get into the room and rescue Mio. Because Mio has suddenly decided she wants to channel her twin sister Mayu for a while in terms of being really creepy. So we need to make her stop doing that. So we're gonna go get some keys. Now, if you know Fatal Frame 2 at all, you should be kind of going, wait a minute, that door doesn't go to that area. It's because they picked random rooms in Fatal Frame 2 and Fatal Frame 1 and just stuck them together. It, it doesn't make any sense, but it's not supposed to. <laughs> but this is one of the times where if you know Fatal Frame 2, you're kind of helped because there's a key here, which is where the key, I think where the key was in Fatal Frame 2 as well. So it does sort of borrow from the game. Also, we have to be careful in here because there is a little Reika currently chasing us. Trust me, she is. You may not be able to see her, but she's there. I'm just too fast for her. So both of the keys are right in here. So all we have to do is grab them and then go get Mio out. But there's gonna be a slight problem. Ignore that ghost girl, she's not important right now. There's gonna be a slight problem that we will see in just a moment here with trying to get back to Mio. Because it's Fatal Frame, there's always a problem. So if you know this room from Fatal Frame 2 at all, you guys know what was in this room in Fatal Frame 2, because guess what? He's back. It is the Kusabi from Fatal Frame 2. Uh, technically it's a different Kusabi, but it's the same ghost type. So we have time for maybe like uh, five donations right now because we are now locked in this room. We cannot kill the ghost. So we just have to run around until the game decides it wants to unlock. For sure. Oh, we. <laughs> we have a $25 donation from MacMog saying, Have we tried offering the ghost a hot Wendy's Frosty Dairy Dessert? Or can they only enjoy the ghost of hot drinks? I've, I've lost track of the backstory. Thank you so much for your donation. Um, and speaking of Frosty Dairy Desserts, hot drinks? Um, if you guys don't know, there's a Wendy's hot drink commercial or a training video. And it is a bob. So, in honor of Wendy's hot drinks, can we get a $5 donation train going? $5 <laughs> for hot drink for each ghost in this game? Can we do it? Let's get those hot drinks served up for our ghosts. 
Oh, that is a and lot we of have, ghosts. <laughs> yeah, a lot of ghosts. Um, but going to is a fantastic cause, the Lala Fund. We are uh, just under, let's see, let me double check here. We're at $62,730 raised from Malala Fund. Chat, come on. I know we can do it. Let's get to 63K. Let's do it. Let's do it. Heck yeah. So the door unlocked itself. And we went to the room where Mio went. But she's not there anymore because of course she's not there anymore. That would be too easy. But there was another puzzle key. So, just like in Fatal Frame 2, we are going to follow the butterflies because nothing bad ever happens if we follow the butterflies. And I'm going to grab this stone mirror here because I'm playing a nightmare. The stone mirror is an item that if you ever go below 0 HP, it breaks and fills your HP bar. So, it's a get out jail free card in case you get hit by an instant kill or something. Very, very useful in <laughs> nightmare runs. Alright. So we're going through more areas stolen from Fatal Frame 2, and there's Mio! She's totally fine! Right? She's gone now. She's not a ghost, I swear. She's not a ghost. She is alive. And in fact, the only ending where you actually see what happens to her is the good ending. Thing is, the only difference between the normal ending and the good ending is the slides that appear over the credits. <laughs> so the actual ending cutscene doesn't change. But we do get to find out that not only did we save Kay, we saved Mio. We have, it's the only way that you got confirmation that she, sur that she survived. So two for the price of one chat, you saved two characters. Mio. So now we actually have to fight the Kusabi. Thing is, I do a lot of damage. Other thing is, so does he. <laughs> I want to ask, what is a kusabi? Um, Fatal Frame in Fatal Frame Two, the kusabi is. I can't. Rem I speak Japanese, but I can't remember what um, kusabi stands for. It's sort of like, uh, in in between, sort of. It's like a like a holdover. Like, it, I don't know how to really describe what the name means, but in Fatal Frame Two, part of the token fatal frame ritual that went totally wrong and everything went bad that happened in that game something that the villagers of Minakami village in fatal frame 2 did in order to sort of extend their uh, need to do their special super spoopy ritual was something they called the kusabi ritual and it involves taking a poor unsuspecting soul who visited the village and just wanted to have his vacation um, tying him up a bunch, stringing him up, and sacrificing him to their uh, little god thing. So that's what the Kusabi is. <laughs> it I is see. a very unfortunate <laughs> tourist. Yeah. <laughs> the Kusabi is a very unfortunate tourist. But if you have any questions about any of the other ghosts, because this we are skipping all of the lore in this run, and this game has a lot of lore. So if you got any questions, please let me know, because I've played this game so many times that I could probably do at least part of it blindfolded if I wanted to. <laughs> yes, it is. So for the entirety of Fatal Frame 3, we've been getting letters from Kay. Ray and Kay have never met each other, but we've been getting letters from him, except they're being addressed to you, Ray's ex fiance now, we've been getting these letters, but not once yes. does Ray think to call the man and let him know that her fiancé has died. <laughs> she just keeps getting these letters and ignoring them. So finally, he calls her and goes, hey, what's going on? And finally, she lets him know, and he goes, oh, well, I'm going through the same sort of thing. I'll come over and we'll figure this out together. Because Kay is very much a let's solve the problem sort of individual. We're going to skip that scene because uh, it's a shower scene. This game has... Two of them? <laughs> I think it's either two or three. I think it's two. But we skip them because they're, yeah, n not, not, not stream appropriate. But this night is over, so we'll be going to the next one. So 
thankfully, I wouldn't have to bring it up, but we are getting very close to when we save K. Now you may notice that I didn't go into the next chapter immediately because there is a glitch in this game, which I didn't trigger there because it's not a glitch you want, it's not a good glitch. If you go directly to the bed the second you go into the room and go into the next chapter, it doesn't actually trigger the chapter. Instead, it brings you up as if you're still in K's chapter, and it doesn't actually start the next chapter. You have to leave the mansion and then re-trigger it. Because something about that little ghost hand that slithered underneath the bed bugs the game out if you try and go into the next chapter too early and it thinks that you haven't finished chapter uh, eight yet. This chapter is pretty short. It's just two boss fights. So thankfully pretty soon you guys will get to see what I have to do to get the good ending. All right. And it must not be open. So this is a cleaver guy. That priestess the shrine must be Got him. I almost didn't get him there. <laughs> So this ghost, we fought him once, but we've seen him a couple times. This is 10 guy. He's not five guy, he's not seven guy, he's 10 guy. Now, the story with him and with those ghosts that I had, those tattooed ghosts that I had to take out earlier, is when everything went wrong and all of the rituals in this game went badly, they decided to try and cover their tracks by just throwing some concrete at it. They just tried to seal everything up. Now that didn't go very well. So they decided to do some unfortunate things to a couple carpenters and turn them into human pillars. So that's why we had to go take them out earlier because they are preventing us from getting to the end of the game. Which means that at the end of this chapter, once we have actually opened that doorway, we will be in the final third-ish, final quarter of the game. So we'll be getting closer and closer to the end. We still got, you know, an hour, but in terms of the gravitas of the game, we're getting we're getting a little further on. All right, and there's Mr. Ten guy again. We just got to follow him and snap a little snapshot. Just, just, just don't listen if you don't like on, on uh, choking sounds, I guess. I hadn't thought of that. I should have worn that a little bit early. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to take this picture and we're going to immediately turn around and leave. As the camera gives us a very unfortunate close-up of that body. But... Now we've got time for, mm, let's say two donations because I have to go all the way back to where I started the chapter again. For sure. We have a $50 donation from players A and B saying, ears perk up. Did I hear something about hot drinks? Well, as you know, hot drinks really get you going. Warms you up when speedrunners be slowing. Keep that tray rolling. Choo choo. Indeed. And we have a $5 donation from Zokuban saying, Here's to hot drinks during a cozy horror block and 63k for Malala Fund. Also, maybe a little less spooky tourism in haunted houses. <laughs> yeah, actually, fun story. So the very intro cutscene shows Rei and Miku coming to the actual mansion. So the entire game, you're running around the Manor of Sleep, which is the, you know, dream mansion. But there is an actual mansion in the world of the game, an actual real mansion. But Miku and Rei decide to go visit the mansion, and it's after that that they start having dreams. I'm just gonna wait for him to attack me again. Turn around, and... There we go. Got him. So you guys talking about hot drinks is making me kind of sad. I made a really nice cup of tea before this and then I forgot to drink it, so now it's cold. <laughs> what is your preferred hot drink that you like to have? <laughs> tea for sure, what is yours? 
Yeah, I like tea. I like black tea and I always like a good cappuccino with nice foam. <laughs> I like coffee. I love myself I love myself a good chai. Oh um, chai. Chai is one of my favorites, like a good chai latte. But a lot of the tea that I make at home, like this tea here, um, I actually blended myself. I keep oh. a whole bunch of I just keep a whole bunch of loose leaf teas and tea accoutrement um in my desk. And I just decided before stream, hey, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna mix something up. Just threw a whole bunch of things into <laughs> into the pot and just made my own tea. This one has oolong, um, cardamom pods, ginger, sarsaparilla root, two little bits of clove, and I think that's all I put in it. <laughs> yes. So we're gonna have another phone call with Yoshi. Yoshi really wants to get let out of the phone lines, but uh, we're not an electrician. We can't help. Now, by haunting the phone lines, if you listen, she is still yelling in the phone lines. So for this is the last phone call in the game, I think. But it's just a little neat um, thing that this game does where the house is haunted. It gets more and more haunted and there's more and more hauntings the more you play the game. We have not seen a fraction of the hauntings that are in the game because I've been going so fast. But Isn't she down here? Oh no, she's not down here. What am I thinking? That's the next chapter. So this is what I mean by sometimes chapters blur together. Um, I thought I had to do something in this chapter, but it's not this chapter, it's after the next chapter. <laughs> Because sometimes you forget when you have to do what in this game. All right, so this is the moment where we're going to do things that you don't do if you're actually speedrunning this game for speedrun.com. Because there is no good ending leader leaderboard for this game. So as far as I know, I'm the only person who actually runs good ending for this game. Which sort of makes this probably a de facto world record if I PB, but... <laughs> So what you do to get the good ending is this ghosty here, who you've seen a couple times now, her name is Kyoka. She keeps mistaking K for her lost boyfriend. We are not her lost boyfriend. And we need to make sure that she knows we are not her lost boyfriend. And we do that by teaching her a lesson. Darn it. Okay, I missed. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, climbing. Okay, there we go. Got her. Where's she at? Oh, 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 there she is. Got her. All right, we have taught her a lesson and she has decided to bequeath us with a key. Now, if I was doing, if I was speed running this game normally, I would not be doing any of this at all. I would have ignored her, I wouldn't have fought her and I would have just gone past her. But we're going to do a little bit of extra stuff and we're going to have a little bit of a The Ring reference in a second here, if you've ever seen The Ring. Fatal Free definitely loves its uh, jokes about old horror movies, but we have a well. Let's take a picture of the well. And that ghost we just fought is in that picture. So the story of Kyoka the ghost is the story of how we get the good ending. Kyoka is the, uh, let's say she's the mother of another character who we only see a little bit called Kaname. Kaname was the main antagonist Reika's boyfriend. Things didn't go well for them and that is what triggered all the bad stuff that happened in this game. But Kyoka is Kaname's mother and for some strange reason, Kei looks a lot like Kaname and Kaname looks a lot like Kaname's father. So Kyoka keeps mistaking you for her boyfriend and keeps trying to get you back. Doesn't really end that well for anybody involved. But what we have to do here is we have to have a couple fights with Kyoka in specific parts 
of the mansion in order to get our hands on her earring. Once we have the earring in our inventory, Kay is safe. So that is the point of this chapter. The reason why I'm doing it now and not say next chapter or later is the second I go through a specific door in this game, we get to deal with something called the purple candles. And I will explain those once we get to that point. Oh, I went the wrong way. <laughs> I got a little carried away explaining things. Okay. So this is the second time in the game where Kay actually gets to show that he is a big, strong person. And he likes to push things. Now this is an area in the game that if you are not getting the good ending, you never see. And it requires more walking very dangerously on the roofs. Don't, don't do this. Don't do this, guys. It's, it's not safe. Excuse me? Do we have some time for a couple of donations? Oh yeah, we have a moment here. I was just a little I was just a little bit wait, am I getting attacked by a ghost oh, right now? Oh no, no worries, no worries. We have a one hundred dollar donation from Nova Bear saying, always cool to see frost flame fatal events for more speed running goodness outside of AGDQ and SGDQ. Keep up the great work and good good luck to all the runners. Yeah. And I have a twenty five dollar donation from Anonymous saying Orb. Orb. Fatal Frame has a lot of orbs. There's orbs when you take pictures of ghosts. There's orbs in puzzles. Lots of orbs. So we're about to go into the second fight against Kyoka. Oh, she's getting started a little bit early, isn't she? Okay. Where are you at, Kyoka lady? I have to take your picture. Oh, there she is. Oh, why you gotta be like this? Why you gotta be like this, Kyoka? Got her. She's not there anymore. Oh, yes, she is. Never mind. Alright. And one more. Got her. Cool. So these fights, trust me, would be a lot longer and a lot more difficult if I wasn't on New Game Plus. But since it's on Nightmare, it's still quite a bit dangerous because, again, I can get two shot by anyone. All right, now that we've got the key, you've got probably time for three or four donations because we have to backtrack all the way back to where I got the Dianthus key. Excellent. We have a $25 donation from Opaque Dreamer saying, Somehow I never miss Horror Block. Thanks to the runners, hosts, and tech crew for putting this fun event. And a $10 donation from Little Bo saying thanks for the spooks and i just want to put a quick note on here that we are almost at 63k uh, do uh donations raised for malala fund so everybody we can do this 63k by the end of the run we can definitely do that chat i believe in you oh yeah let's we get got those time. hot drinks served up yeah, hot we drinks got, served we up to our ghosts <laughs> <laughs> do you think ghosts what what do you think would be a ghost favorite type of tea? Oh, you know what? Maybe something a little misty, a little smoky, maybe? I'm not sure. What do you guys, what do you think? Yeah, let, let us know in donations. So let us know in donations what you think the, a ghost favorite type of tea would be. I'm gonna go with Earl Grey. Also, we just got Kyoka's earring, which means that Kay is safe. Kay is not going to get thanos at the end of the game. He is a safe man now. <laughs> oh, oh my god, that's a good one. Boolong tea. That's, that's a great <laughs> one. Yes, I, I see you, chat. I see you. Boolong tea. Boolong tea, best tea. <laughs> What do you think, Alzerini? What do you, you think is a ghost fair kind of tea? Have you heard of rooibos tea? It's like a tea from a bush. 
I actually have some in my tea chest. Oh, cool. Yeah, I saw someone say Rui Boos, like Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Rui Boos. <laughs> it's Roybus? That's a great one. So that's a weird, that's a weird T word. I can see how somebody might mispronounce it. So you guys can see that the screen is all black and white vision now. Um, that's bad. So from this point on, all of the characters in the game will have something called the purple candle. Now the, or well, pur purifying candle, not purple candle. The purifying candle stops this, uh, black and white vision from happening. We want to stop this black vision, black and white vision from happening because if I was to get hit by a ghost now, it would do much more damage. And also, if I was to get a random ghost, it most of the time would not actually be a random ghost. It would be Reika. It would be the main antagonist of the game. So we don't like the black and white vision. Now, I can't remember off the top of my head if Reika getting hit by Reika in this particular like black and white vision is an instant kill. I vaguely remember that it might be. Thankfully though, we get our first purple candle in a second here, and generally you don't have to worry about it during a speed run because we're going too fast to run out of candle. Unless I mess something up later. Oh, hi, Ghosty. Hey, Ghosty. I'm just going to do this puzzle real quick. With this puzzle, what's the objective with the colors? The objective with the colors is to when you only have a certain number of turns and the objective is to um come on Kay, behave the objective is to when those turns are done to have the spokes in the center match the color of the spokes on the outside so blue to blue yeah blue to blue green to green red to red orange to orange but the thing is when you're first looking at it you don't really know what um, like colors they're supposed to be when they when you finish the puzzle. So generally, when you're first playing this game, you'll just click and fail the puzzle the first time, look at what the colors are, and then do it a second time with a little bit more. Oh, that's how I'm supposed to do it. So one interesting thing about this game, it plays on a backwards compatible PS3. That was the first way that I speed ran this game, really was using a disc-based backwards compatible PS3. But there is a glitch in this game that only happens if you're playing it on a backwards compatible PS3 from the disc that causes a lot of the doors in this game to be halfway transparent and sort of glitchy like they're in the matrix or something. I wish I could sort of describe what it is because it's weird, but if you ever come across that glitch yourself and you're playing it, it's normal, trust me, it's fine. <laughs> So we're just slowly walking across here because we are finally gotten into the shrine, quote unquote, area of the mansion, which is where things start to get a little bit more dangerous and a much more spoopy. So we're just gonna go over here and grab this because this is nightmare and I need more powerful film. Okay, mind if I make a quick announcement? Yeah. All right, I'm happy to announce that we've reached six $63,000 for Malala Fund. So thank you everybody for your contributions. We've reached 63K. Can I get some hype in the chat and some claps? Ha, ha. Thank you everybody. Six, 63K. K. 63K. 63K. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, see what I did there? To totally calculated. 63K. Can we get to 64? We got like 45-ish minutes. I know you can do it, chat. Let's get to 64K. 4K. 4K, yes. We'll get to 64K, 4K. In honor of saving ya boy with his fox ears. All right. You see the candle went down a little bit on the uh, bottom left corner of the screen. It does go down over time. And you can pick some more up later on as you're going through the mansion, but it's generally not needed during the speedrun. I say generally because sometimes I pick it up for safety during nightmare 
just because I don't want to deal with getting accidentally instant killed by the ghost. Oops. Stop. Yeah. Got her. Alright, where are they at? Oh, there they are. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm baiting. Nope, that didn't work. I'm trying to bait them into an attack to give me a moment to actually hit them. Now the downside is I can get hit right now because Kay is just standing still for some reason while we wait for the ghost to go away. Thankfully, I didn't get hit. But that is sort of a downside. That's all, the only time that it really happens is during this fight. And I have had it almost kill me before during a run because for some reason you can still get hit there. we should figure out some like incentive for getting to like 64k by the end of this hmm. well we did mention the bunny cam earlier didn't we, we? did all right how about this if you guys want to see a close-up of garris my big fluffy lop ear gray bunny you've been seeing in the background here if you want me to bring him up to the camera and show him to you we will have to get to 64k by the end of the run how about that? 64K, everyone, <laughs> for the buddy cam. We can do it. So you guys want to meet Garrus up close and personal and get to see him get pet in the camera. Yeah, we better get to 64K, you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. With pets, everybody. With this pets. is not a drill. Bunny cam with pets. Right, let's look again. Nope, cat is not there. Darn it. <laughs> Oh, right, now I remember. For Sometimes when, you play, when you've played this game, even if you've played it as many times as I have, you sort of forget what you need to do to trigger the nighttime sequence. <laughs> so if you saw me sort of go in a circle there, it was me forgetting <laughs> what I needed to do. <laughs> Are there any rabbits in any of the Fatal Frame games that you see? Not that I know of, sadly. There's a few cats. There's quite a few cats. Mm. But not any, not any bunnies that I can think of. There are bunnies in other horror games that I love to play, but none that I can think of in this one. All right. So if you guys can sort of hear singing going on. Hey, look, it's Miku with her cat ears. Totally fine, right? She's just, she's just singing before she goes to bed. Oh, wait, ghost lady. Yeah, Miku is, it's never confirmed, but it's kind of implied she might be a little bit possessed. Just a touch. Just, just a little. Just a smidgen. All right. So once I go to bed here, we will be going into the last chapters as each character. So chapter 11, which is the one that we are starting here, is the last chapter is Miku, then we have Kay's last chapter, and then we have the last chapter. So we're getting there, chat, let's go. All right. All right, all right, all right. So we have time for, gosh, maybe like four or five donations because I have to go all the way back to where Kay took the picture of the little ghost girl in the last chapter. For sure. We have a $25 donation from Pylon saying, ghosts love boba tea. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we have another $25 donation from that one Chelsea saying, if you can kill ghosts with just a camera, we can get to 64k. I couldn't agree more. Let's do it, <laughs> chat. Let's get to 64k and get the bunny cam with pets. So I saw it was mentioned in the chat. Yes, Miku spends all of this game just constantly talking about the rain. <laughs> and this game in Fatal Frame 5? Yes. Fatal Frame 3 and Fatal Frame 5 both pretty much take place in a permanent torrential downpour. 
At least when it comes to the real world sections. Because pretty much every night in Fatal Frame 3 is raining. But we still have time for maybe, let's say, two donations? Sure thing. We have a $200 donation from Anonymous with no comment. Thank you so much for your contribution. And we have a $5 donation from Bushido. No comment. And we have another $5 donation from Anonymous saying trans rights. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your... Yes. Uh, thank you so much for your contributions to Malala Fund. All right, still got time for one more. For sure. Uh, we have a $25 donation from Anonymous with no comment. Thank you so much for your contributions to Malala Fund. That is working for a world where all girls can learn and lead. So I got time for another one because I'm, st I'm still backtracking. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we have a tw another $25 donation from Giren saying, happy to help to support such a great cause. The more those who are minimized by society are educated, the more we all win. Couldn't agree more. Thank you so much for your generosity. All right. So <clears throat> we picked up the commandment book. Now, <laughs> this is the point of the game where I'm going to be saying we have a lot of time for donations because we just picked that up and now we have to go almost, yeah, pretty much all the way back to the beginning of the chapter again, so we got time for more donations. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. I just want to remind everybody that the Malala Fund is working for a world where all girls can learn and lead. Malala Fund advocates for resources and policy changes needed to give all girls a secondary education invest in local education leaders, and amplifies the voices of girls fighting for change. You can learn more about what Malala Fund does at malala.org. And I want to remind everybody also that the Yeti is donating $5 to Malala Fund for every shirt sold. And we have an amazing design featuring some of the characters from our marathon, including Rei Kurosawa from Fatal Frame 3. Check out the awesome artwork and be sure to snag some swag and donate to a great cause from the uh, Frost Fatale 2022 collection on the yeti.com. Rei Kurosawa is definitely the best Fatal Frame protagonist. Just drawing that line in the sand, she is my absolute favorite, and I've played all of them. Except for Spirit Camera, I haven't played that one. But it's not technically a Fatal Frames game, it's an offshoot on the DS. But we got time for probably another three. <laughs> For sure. We have a $10 donation from the Blues Man saying no comment. Thank you so much for your contribution. And tw another $25 donation from KK saying <laughs> so happy to get to support such an amazing cause. Good luck to the runners and hope everyone has a good day or night. You can probably get one more. Sure. A $10 donation coming in from Dougal's mom saying, bunny, bunny, bunny. <laughs> the bunnies are very cute. I definitely did. If you if you were watching AGDQ back in January, I definitely showed off my other pets, my chinchillas, and I do show them off on my stream sometimes. So if you guys like, if you guys like fun, fluffy little bunnies and chinchillas, I got a stream for you. All right, so we're just going to place the commandment book here. And for some reason, that opens a door upstairs. <laughs> now, if you are sensitive to lights at all, I would look away from the screen now um, until I tell you otherwise, because this next room is, I completely forgot about it until just now, this next room is full of just flashing lights. So I would look away from the screen until I tell you otherwise. I'm just gonna ignore that ghost and go, and you guys are safe from that room. You guys are good now. You can look back at the screen. I know that as a kid, when I would have to do extended fights for getting some of the uh, extra bits, extra boss fights, extra camera attachments, I did, I, that room would give me a headache sometimes. All right, so we're gonna pick up the mirror of loss. And now, yet again, we got time for quite a few donations because I have to go all the way back to that room where I had the engraver fight with Kay. <laughs> for sure. We have a $50 donation coming in from Salander with no comment. 
Thank you so much for your contribution. And a $25 donation coming in from Uncle Dave saying, donating for the bunny percent bonus run. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> We're at $63,221. Everybody, let's get to 64K. 4K. <laughs> Still got time for probably uh, two more. For sure. Just want to remind everybody, if you donate a total of $125 by the end of Frost Fatales from now until the last day, you can win a super ultra rare PS5 and a Skytech custom gaming PC. So, $125 for a great cause and you get an awesome PS5 or gaming PC, I say that's a win-win. So be sure to get your donations in on gamesunquick.com. And be sure to check out the, all, all the other awesome prizes. Yeah, with the prices of just graphics cards alone lately. Yeah. It's difficult yeah, enough absolutely. to get a good game. <laughs> difficult <laughs> enough to get a good gaming PC. Okay, so we cannot place the mirror yet because we have to have a boss fight against Yashu again. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, just for safety's reason, just gonna slow down time. Just casually slow down time. Like you do. Okay, I wasn't able to get a second one. Now, in order to make it go a little bit faster, I slow down time and then I stop slowing down time until I see her moving and then I slow down time again. I did that too late. Now, this is because it can the slowdown of the slowdown that Miku can do can make the fights take longer than you want it to. So you kind of want to toggle it on, toggle it off, toggle it on, toggle it off, as long as you know you're safe. All right, so now we're going to place the mirror that Miku found. And that opens up a mysterious door. In the back here, I wonder what could be through this mysterious door. I mean, I know what's through the mysterious door. It's the end of the game. <laughs> but not yet, though. Not yet. Each character has to go say hi to the end of the game before we can actually have the end of the game. So that voice that you just heard, that is Reika, the main ghost of the game, who, as I remind you, is the same voice actress as the main character, Rei Kurosawa. They have the same voice actress. Now, when I found that out, it kind of shocked me because they don't really sound that similar. So kudos to the voice actress. She did a really good job. All right, so we are just slowly... <laughs> very slowly making our way down here. So we probably got time for another donation because you walk so slowly when you're going across these beams. Yeah, for sure. I want to remind everybody that the Tails Boss Rush uh, incentive is open for Sonic the Hedgehog Forever. If met at $3,500, Flying Fox will complete a boss rush with Tails following the Sonic the Hedgehog Forever showcase. Be sure to select the incentive on the drop-down when you donate. And we are at about 1300 for that incentive. Almost there. Alrighty then. So, this is when the little girl fights start to get really annoying. And I call them little girls, they're actually called handmaidens. I just always forget that that's what they're technically called. Now, the handmaiden down here is the handmaiden, that, the good handmaiden that we've been following. You can see she's had, a better, had, had better days. Now the other three handmaidens um, did that to her. So we're just gonna slow time. And we're gonna casually give them a little bit of payback in the name of the good ghost girl. Okay. But the downside is now we're fighting three of them, which can get a little dicey if I'm not paying attention to where they are at. Where are you? Come on, little ghost girl. Oh, no, 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 no. So that attack there can be really annoying because if you don't get away from it quickly enough, they sort of pin you to the ground. Okay, I got that. Yeah. Mm. Yep, there, there we go. There we go. Miku's, Miku's had a better days. She's had better days. Okay. 
they're all like literally one hit from dead. <laughs> I just gotta, I just gotta hit them. All right, I think that was good. <laughs> I hit the door too quickly. Because it doesn't let you go through until you finish the fight. So, neat trick here. I'm going to pull up the camera as soon as I can. If if it'll let me do it in quickly enough. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. So, what you guys just saw there was the when the ghost popped up, it was Kaname. Um, the boyfriend of the main antagonist ghost but when you pull up the camera so it shows you what miku sees when you pull up the camera what miku sees is her brother mifuyu now the good ghost child who has been leading us through part of this game we've been playing is miku is the little sister of kaname the main antagonist's boyfriend now the kaname the ghost's boyfriend really wanted to see his girlfriend one last time before they underwent this ritual that went really badly so he decided to go say hi to her and he got his little sister to help now because they did that everything that was bad that happened in the game happened and that was the reason why the other handmaidens were like you shouldn't have done that you were a naughty girl oh, oh wait no i don't have to go down the stairs now so this is the only time in the game where you really wake up when you think a chapter would have ended because you would have thought Miku's chapter would have been over there, but it's not. Instead, we just have to talk to Miku. And then we go back to sleep. Now, there is a glitch coming up here. I'm the one who discovered it as far as I know, and I'm going to try to pull it off. I think I've discovered a consistent setup, but it can get a little dicey whether or not it actually happens or not. So cross your fingers because I think it's a pretty cool really glitch. Now there's been a couple times now in the run where you've seen control get taken away from me so the camera can show me things. So I can't move at all, but the camera is like, look at this interesting thing. Look at this interesting thing. Now you may progress with the game. You're not supposed to be able to move during those moments at all. But I found out by accident during one of my runs that if you happen to be close enough to an interactable object and you mash the X button in like the frame or two before the game takes control away from you, you sort of flip the flag. So the flag for getting control lost when you click on something that's interactable gets then flipped so you're able to move around when you're not supposed to be able to move around. As far as I know, it's only useful in two specific moments of this game, and I only have occasionally get it to work this time. So hold on to your butts. Let's see if we can get this to work. Right. So I go over here to this specific spot. Test it. I think we're good. Check to make sure. Okay, we're good. All right. So I'm gonna hold down to try and get the trigger down an X, and I'm mashing it, and I got it. All right. So this moment, I should not be able to move around right here. But you can see I'm obviously moving around right here. And because of that, I'm able to cross the entire room and hit the trigger for the end of the chapter a good 10-ish seconds before I'm supposed to. Also, that is the end of Miku's final chapter. Now I just get to skip a whole bunch of cutscenes and do some more running around the house in order to do get to Kay's last chapter. So if we've got any more donations, we've got some time for it. Yeah, absolutely. We have a $25 donation from The Biggest Steve saying, here's $25 for Chinchilla Percent Special Ending. <laughs> and we also have a another $25 donation coming from Yukupo saying, hop aboard the Bunny Percent Train. And I just want to inform everybody that we are at 63425 total raised for Malala Fund. We are so, so close for 64 k We can do it, chat. I believe in us. I believe... 
Okay, now I just get to button mash for like 30 seconds here, so we got time for some more donations. Because <laughs> this is all of the lore books that I haven't picked up during this game. And you have to mash through all of them to get to the one you actually need. For sure. We have another $25 donation from Nicole saying, Donating during one of my favorite game series of all time. Get those ghosts. All right, got one and more. And we have, yeah, of course. We have a $50 or $54 donation from Will It Work saying, In memory of Anne Marie Danziker, a teacher and artist dedicated to bringing knowledge to everyone. We miss her. Please put this towards Maiden of Blackwater, if that's a thing. If not, Miss Scarlet's choice. <laughs> Oh man, I wish one of these days, one of these days, I would like to run Maiden of Blackwater at some point because I do, I love, I love that game. And it did recently get remastered so you can actually get it on Steam. So now we are starting the final chapter as K. So this is K's final chapter. And if, if you guys had not donated to get that incentive to save K, this would be the end of this chapter where he would get Thanos. So good on you guys for donating for that because now, K doesn't get to get Thanos. All right, so we're just going to... Hi, Reika. We're just going to go the opposite direction of the main antagonist ghost in this game because I'm on Nightmare and I ain't about that life. So those red rooms that were covered in those red paper dolls that you guys have seen a fair few times during this run, we now have to go to every single one of them and solve a puzzle. So if you got any donations, because we're going to be doing this for a hot minute, please let me know. All right, so that's the first one. So this one in particular is the only one that I know of where you have to pull up the camera in order to get the ghost to trigger. <sighs> Sorry, she almost got me there. So I didn't know that for a hot minute that you actually had to pull up the camera to trigger the ghost. So this is the moment when I talked about where when little girls start to fly, things get a little dicey because the flying version of the little handmaid girls is the much more difficult version to hit. So I normally will just try and bait them into an attack if I'm trying to be safe. If I'm not trying to be safe, I'll just see if I can hit them, but. It can sometimes be easy to dodge, but sometimes they just decide they wanna fly around and say hello. Okay, I got her. See, it may not have seemed harder or more dicey there but trust me later on in the game there will be a fight against three of them all flying in the air and that is when it gets a little dicey We still have to try and do this chapter, or at least most of it, as quickly as possible in order to not get attacked by the main antagonist ghost. So you gotta, gotta go fast. If you got any donations, let me know. Yeah, absolutely. We have a $25 donation from Colors with no comment. Thanks for your contribution. Another $25 donation from Bobo Luck <laughs> uh, <laughs> with no comment. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your contribution. And another $25 donation from Anonymous. Thank you so much, everybody, for supporting Malala Fund, who is, in fact, working for a world where all girls can learn and lead. You can learn more about Malala Fund at malala.org. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do the second puzzle now. Now, the thing that you have to do is you have to get rid of the shadow. And it's different each time because it depends on the purple-ish, purplish pink lights, because those ones you can't turn off, but any of the other um, little fire dishes, candle dishes, you can turn off and on as you see fit. It can be a little hard to ga um, gauge, and you sort of trial and error it, and error it until you sort of figure it out. But it looks like we did it there just fine. All right, so I have 
a little ways to run in order to get to the third one. So if you got any donations, now's the time. For sure. Uh, I want to update everybody. We are just under $600 left to reaching 64K. So everybody, let's rally and get this bunny percent special ending at 64K. <laughs> 4K. And who doesn't want to see a bunny with pets? Pets, everybody. Pets are at stake. Let's get those donations rolling in. Cares. Oh, dear. Okay, okay. You guys didn't see it because I just turned around and left the room as quickly as possible. But I'm pretty sure the stroller grandma ghost spawned in the hallway there. <laughs> so I just noped out and left because... Um, I'm more scared of the random spawning stroller grandma ghost than I am of the main antagonist of this game. <laughs> because I have not really lost a run to the main antagonist except for once or twice during the final fight, but I have lost a run in that hallway to that particular random ghost. All right, so we got another fight against Kyoka because she just does not have chill. Where is she at? She is here. Oh, hi. <laughs> Hello. She almost got in my face. It wasn't very nice. All right, and that should that should be, if I remember correctly, the last time we have to come across oh, Kyoka. So we haven't been down here in a while. We only came down here once. Way, 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 way back towards the beginning-ish of the game when we were playing as Miku, but we get to come down here once as K now and once in the next chapter as Rei. So just for safety's sake, I'm just gonna come up here and grab this purifying candle. Normally I don't, but I am getting a little bit lower on the uh, purifying candle than normally, than I normally do. And the last thing I want is to get um, grabbed by Reika. She's not a nice ghost anymore. All right, so we got the third puzzle here. And this one, we actually have candles on the other side. I have a question regarding this room. Cause the walls are like red and there's like, looks like figures on the walls. What are those? <laughs> so, the, the lore of this game, man. The lore of this game can get a little creepy at times. So I've been talking about the handmade ghosts, the little girl ghosts, and their job was to impale the shrine maiden during the ritual through her hands and through her feet. And all of those dolls, the hundreds and hundreds of dolls that are peppering the walls of that room, are their practice dolls. Their practice dolls were little pa little red paper fake shrine maiden dolls that they would practice impaling by repeatedly impaling more and more shrine maiden dolls to those walls. <laughs> yeah, that's very creepy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And... If you actually, if you read a lot of the notes that are scattered around that I've just been skipping through, you do get a little bit more of the backstory behind the other go um, handmaidens. I can't remember too much off the top of my head, but there's one of the little girls in particular who's just, just, she's not okay. Cause one of her notes just ends with, I hope I get to impale a real priestess soon. And you're like, Kid, where are your parents? <laughs> but yeah, a lot of the lore of the Fatal Frame games, you can just get the surface level stuff. We go, oh, that's really spoopy. That's scary. I don't like that. But then you read deeper and it's a lot, it's a lot more spoopy than you give it credit for. <laughs> Also, all of the tiny doors that go into each one of these rooms, they're tiny because they're only supposed to have children and the little girls. The little girls are short enough to be able to go through them normally. 
Um, also, if I remember correctly, that's just a thing in some old Japanese houses because it shows up in the other Fatal Frame games a lot as well. Mm. So all of the stakes that I've been collecting in this chapter from those uh, the little handmaid's rooms is we're doing exactly what the handmaidens are supposed to do because parts of the part of one of the notes that Kate collected in a previous chapter told him, hey, if anything goes wrong with the ritual, just make sure the priestess is bound down. Then everything will be fine. So Kay is thinking, oh, okay, then that's all I have to do. Then everything will be fine. Spoiler alert, everything will not be fine. And him doing this is what gets him thanos if you didn't get the um, get the kill because he's going to get the good ending. And the reason why it doesn't get Kay Thanos, which I find kind of interesting, is because Kay looks like Reika's um, former lover, former boyfriend, because they look so similar, having that earring on makes the main ghost um, sort of mistake Kay for her boyfriend so she doesn't outright Thanos him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's the reason why that works. All right, where did she go? Well, that's not good. Oh, there she is. One more hit. And done. Alright, so that is the last fight that you have as K. And we get a little preview here of the final boss arena of the game. So this Might area I... right here. Sorry, what? Oh, uh, I, I was going to ask if, I, if you mind if I give a quick update on our total. Absolutely. Go awesome. ahead. Yeah, so we are at $63,710. We have so many donations rolling in. Thank you so much for your contributions, everybody. We are just under $300 away from reaching 64 k for that bunny percent special ending. So get your donations in. Let's do it. I know you guys want to meet Garrus up close. He is a very, very good bunny. Also, he's, very, he's a very husky bunny. He's a big bunny with big old floppy ears and very much fluffy. So at this point, if we had not gotten the good ending, Kay would not be asleep there. He would be a soot stain. And that's what they actually call it. They call it a soot stain on the couch. So thankfully, you guys saved him. He is sleeping. Though I do want to point out that uh, Ray is, oh, come on, that Ray is not the best hostess because she's got this guy who's trying to help her out, staying over. She doesn't give him a pillow. She doesn't give him a blanket. She doesn't let him stay in the spare bed. <laughs> She just does the thing. Okay. Oh, right. No, 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 no. So this is going to be the second instance of that um, glitch I was talking about earlier. So I'm going to see if I can pull it off. Oh, nope, I didn't. I didn't do it quickly enough. That's fine. This one would only save a second or two if I'd gotten it. Because all it is is me grabbing that spirit stone radio. Remember when I mentioned way, way, way early in the game that that was going to be important later? Well, here it goes. The spirit radio is starting to go off for some reason in the real world. Now, poor Ray now has two comatose people in her, her house, and she has just sounds coming from her attic, which is a little sus. But it gets even more sus to me when you go up there. If Ray will go a little bit quicker. There we go. And you turn the corner. And there's the main antagonist just chilling in your house in her non-tattooed form. So the main antagonist has two ghost forms, non-tattooed and tattooed. Tattooed is the dangerous one, but we don't like it when the main antagonist shows up in my house. And the other thing about that is for some reason, uh, Ray's fiance had the other earring. So Kyoka's earring is what saved yeah. Kay. But Kaname's earring, her boyfriend's actual earring, was for some reason in Ray's attic. <laughs> I don't think they ever really explain why her fiancé had that. But 
He did. So now Ray has it, and because of that, Ray will have the power she needs to take out the final ghost and let everybody go rest in peace. So as soon as I go back to bed here, we will be going into the last chapter of Fatal Frame 3. Ignore the ghosty end of there. Actually, you know what? For funsies. Hey guys, look at ghost. It, it's Yoshi. She's hanging out. If I see you, I, I don't know. Am, am I supposed to be alive? Mind if I read a few donations here? Go ahead, we got time, because I'm going to be doing a whole gauntlet around the mansion, going to different areas. All right, awesome. We have a $50 donation from Anonymous saying, I love Scarlet's stream. Chill vibes and good people. Awesome event here. Great cause, great runs. Lesson three, all. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we have a $100 donation coming in from Ghost saying, Donating for Stroller Grandma's brief appearance. <laughs> 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 Love that. Uh, and a $75 donation coming in from Questlo saying, you got me a bunny. <laughs> Which we are very, very close, everybody, to reaching 64K. 4K. 4K. <laughs> <laughs> so how, wait, how close are we? We are currently at $63,760. I am not good at quick maths, but is that, I think that's $240 Two, a one. About 240, yeah. About 240. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely doable. We can do it. With how many people who are currently watching this stream, I I think that can be done. Just everybody, everybody chip in a buck. Just chip in a buck. I can feel the thought fine. so many people being Yes, me. absolutely. So Chat, so, we can do it. Yes. So, this whole last chapter, I say the last chapter, but it's really like 1.5 chapters. Um, that mirror that Miku picked up earlier um, was never really whole to begin with. It was smashed into pieces in the real world by Reka before she did her little tattoo ritualness. Now you have to go to five different points of the mansion to collect each one of the five pieces of the mirror to put it back together in order to get down to the uh, final boss chamber, which we're not going to be seeing too much of the final fight because uh, New Game Plus overpowered camera. But let me be perfectly like honest, it's my favorite boss in any of the Fatal Frame games. Kirie in Fatal Frame 1, Sae potentially, or the Kusabi in Fatal Frame 2, depending on your ending. Um, Ose in Fatal Frame 5, and I can't remember the name of the ghost, final, the ghost in Fatal Frame 4. But of all of them, it's my favorite fight, because it's just such a fun fight. And fair. It's fun, but fair. Alright, so I'm just gonna kip over here for a second. There's a stone mirror that's been hanging out there the entire game. I just didn't pick it up because we only come down here the one time. And just in case for safety reasons, I'm picking it up now because I may love the final fight in this game a lot. It does have one particular mode that can happen during it that is a one-shot instant kill if I get hit. So for safety reasons, <laughs> I always pick that up on Nightmare. I, will shatter my I, saw, I saw it in the chat, Sakuya. Sakuya is the name of the main ghost in Fatal Frame 4. Thank you, chat. So sadly though, it doesn't look like we were able to give the cat any scritches, because I tried, I kept looking, but it never popped up around me. Wait, no, I'm going the wrong way. What am I doing? So sadly, chat, no Rui scritches today, but I did get to show you guys the cat. So that's something at least. And yes, I hope we can reach the bunny percent donation goal because there is your preview. It is the gray one in the back who you'll get to see up close being very cute. All right, we got time for a few donations here while I'm going collecting the last two bits of the mirror. 
Absolutely. We have a $50 donation from Anonymous saying, 20 for a great fund, 20 for a great bun. And five to ask chat and streamer for their favorite Fatal Frame ghost in the whole series. Mine would oh. have to be the tall lady ghost in Maiden of Blackwater. Oh, oh, I completely forgot about that one. Yeah, the one that's like super, super tall. I went the wrong way. Um, favorite ghost. That's a hard one. If, if I had to pick one, it would either be Reika from Fatal Frame 3, so the main antagonist of this game, or... Um, Yoshi. Yeah, it, uh, this is my favorite Fatal Frame game, you guys. I, I love Fatal Frame 4, 1, and 2, and 4. I love all of them, but... The fact that Yoshi, or Yoshino, haunts your house for the entirety of the game after she um, kicks the bucket early on, it's just so much fun. You can just run around the house and there she is in your kitchen. There she is in your bathroom. There she is chilling in a closet. <laughs> She's just chilling in your phone lines. So yeah, it's, it, it would have to be Yoshino. Yoshino with Reika is a close second. <laughs> Do you have time for a couple more donations? Oh yeah, definitely. Awesome. We have a $10 donation from Honey Bunny saying cheers for the horror block as always thanks to gdq staff runners and tech crew for a great week for a good cause and we have a 25 dollars donation from zenos saying i heard bunny and must donate hopefully <laughs> we make it and i we are so close we are so close everybody less than 90 dollars left to reach 64k we can do it we can get the bunny percent special ending let's go pets included Let's go! We got like, we got probably 10 minutes left, I, I would say, thereabouts. A little bit You're less than actually. It's probably clock. closer to like, go. yeah, it's probably closer to like five or eight, but. Chat, chat, we, we gotta put our speedy boots on and get these donations rolling in for the bunny percent. You are the speedrunner now. <laughs> it's all up to you. Speedrun that 64%, chat! Or 64k percent. Yes, 64k, <laughs> just within reach. Get that bunny percent. I showed off chinchillas during uh, AGDQ. Now I get oh, oh, you guys, oh, chat. My bunny Garrus has flopped. He wants you guys to donate. I can't show you because we haven't gotten to 64. But I'll have you know if you know what a bunny flopping over looks like. He's currently flopped over right down there out of the camera view. Just, just right there. Just right down there. All right, so we now have we have- a $50 donation uh, <laughs> from Pylon saying, bun, cam, bun, <laughs> cam, bun, cam. Bun, cam, bun, cam, bun, cam. <laughs> so now we have a boss gauntlet. We will be fighting um, first Yashu, then three flying ghost girls, Oh, I forgot to pick up a camera or a film that I wanted to pick up. Oops. But, oh, come on. There we go. So first we'll be fighting Yashu, who Yashu is sort of the head of operations. She's sort of the leader of... All right, we're going to just be bad at aiming. There we go. So Yashu is sort of the head of the whole operation at the shrine. She's sort of Reika's adopted mother sort of but um oh i'm seeing some stuff in the chat what what's our donation total right now oh my goodness everybody we did it we reached 64k raised for malala fund and we unlocked bunny percent special ending Hello. kudos to everybody thank you so much for your contributions to a fantastic cause and supporting our runner tonight and our bunny best bunnies so yes that means that at the uh at the end i will let the cutscene the final cutscene play and i will go grab garris and i will show him off just like i showed off the world record chinchilla during kuan in agdq you guys will get to see garris the bunny up close he's very cute i'm excited 
All right. So after a little bit of cutscene lore stuff that we are of course going to skip because cutscenes are slow and we say no cutscenes here. Because if we actually watched all the cutscenes in this game, it would probably be a six hour speedrun. <laughs> All right, so this is the song. If you guys listen, this is the song that I was talking about earlier. That the creepy girls, or the creepy children, sing off and on for a lot of the game. I've just been talking over most of it. I would sing it, chat, but it's late and I'm tired. <laughs> Let's be honest. Also, because I am streaming this off of an Elgato capture card, there would be delay. But we probably got time for a good few donations because it takes a while to walk all the way down these steps. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Great job, everyone, for reaching 64K. We have a few donations here. $125 from Anonymous saying bunny percent hype. Hype indeed. And five dollars from Sammy Pan saying, "Let's see that bun bun." Thanks for the awesome run. <laughs> oh, that rhymed! Excellent. So okay. right there, um, I killed one of, or I took out one of the uh, ghost handmaidens. Now I said that you fight all three of them, and you do. It's just the game does give you a little bit of a, um, a little bit of mercy, and puts the trigger for one of them higher up, so you can actually, if you want to, take out one of them on the stairs, so you don't have to fight all three of them at once. Which is nice, but then it turns around and decides it's going to pit both of the other two ghosts against you when you have no way to run. Mm. And then things like this happen. There we go. Okay. And I can't really effectively attack them when I am, can't run like this because I can't dodge. Grab me, don't grab me. Okay, cool. Now, I'm gonna concentrate a little bit here because I usually don't get grabbed on that um, pillar there, but because I did, I'm a little bit short on health right now. Okay, there goes one of them. Got her. And there goes the other one. All right, so just for safety's sake, this is gonna be the only time you guys see me make a safety save. As soon as it lets me do so. Game. Thank you. Because I am playing on Nightmare, I can't one-shot the final boss on New Game Plus, and because of that, there is a chance that I could die here. Because <laughs> it doesn't take much. And just for safety, I'm gonna grab that too. I usually don't, but you know. You gotta be safe when you need to be safe. So this is the final bit. The next room has the final fight. And then bunnies. I'm sorry, I, I caught I caught a glance of chat and I saw that they were doing a Freddy song but for Fatal Frame. That was that was very that was very cute. It's cute chat. Don't want to see anymore. Alright, so all of these boats are supposed to be like people sending their thoughts and prayers and the souls of the dead to the afterlife. But the problem is because of everything going bad, they can't actually get to the afterlife. So we are going to fix that by smacking Reika in the face with our camera. The downside is that I hit the wrong button there. Oops, <laughs> it's fine. All right. This is a little dangerous. Don't do the thing, don't do the thing, don't do the thing. One more hit. Should be enough. Hopefully she doesn't do the instant kill attack. 
she didn't. Okay. Now, if the game would stop lagging for about three seconds. And time. Sorry, I forgot to mention that it was coming up. <laughs> but that seemed very easy, but trust me, that is dicey because a lot of her hits take pretty much all or most of your health bar. So that is Fatal Frame 3, The Tormented. And while some of the ending cutscene is playing out, I will go grab your guys' just reward in the form of Garrus. We did a chat. We get to see Garrus the bunny with pets. <laughs> He's cute. <laughs> I'm so ready. Oh! Excellent work, everybody. This is Garrus. Oh, oh, oh. There you go, little boy. There you go. Now you're more stable. Now you're more stable. There you go. So this is Garrus. He is... How old are you, little boy? He's getting up there. He's about six years old. If I remember correctly. Yeah, he's a little middle-aged bunny. And he's got flappy ears. He is part Holland Law, part something else, and I'm not sure what the something else is, but he is a whole lot of bunny. He is a very big bunny. So here's your guys' treat for a good 63k. I think he deserves a treat. Here you go, guys. There you go, bunny. Oh, we actually asked this question in chat earlier, but I wanted to ask you, what do you suppose the bunnies prefer eating? Well, they get hay, they get unlimited amounts of hay, and they get pellets every day. I keep a jar of um, cranberries, dried cranberries, at my desk, and that is what a lot of their treats are. I also make them dried apple chips as well. I make them myself. And whenever I get subs or donations and stuff on my stream, they get a treat. <laughs> because at my um, own live stream, at www.twitch.tv slash Miss Scarlet Tanager shouting myself out. They have their own dedicated webcam. So if you like the bunnies, like this little boy here, then come over and follow my stream and you'll be able to see a lot more of them. Shy Bunny is a shy bunny. But I also would like to thank, while we are here watching the ending cutscene and looking at bunnies, I would also like to thank um, the speedrunning community for Fatal Frame. It was definitely one of the things that got me into it. Um, and getting a little bit of a kick in the butt to play the game some more and do some more runs of it after one of my world records got stolen by Cloudmark, who has been in the chat that I've seen. But just to see what my final time was. Now, what was my final time on your guys' end? Your time was two hours, 41 oh. minutes, and 20 seconds. There you go, Karis. There you go. Oh. There you go, he got stuck on my necklace. There we go. So, awesome. according to the game, wow, according to the game, I got two hours and 39 minutes even. <laughs> no seconds, no seconds here. So, awesome. yeah, thankfully, Fatal Frame is timed in game timer, which is nice. But I want to thank uh, everyone for being here and everyone for getting the lovely 64K to be able to see my little bunny boy, Garrus. And I hope I see you guys in my stream soon. Thank you. And thank you very much, Gala, for uh, joining me on commentary, even though you didn't know the game. <laughs> <laughs> nice to be here, yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And that's it. Bye.